Seasons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. And we are live, coming at you from the dank in Newtown. This is the Simpsons Index, episode 32, a.k.a. Squirty Poo. I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me in the dank this week is... Uh, my, my name... <laughs> well, my Bratwurst has a first name, it's F-R-I-T-Z, and... My breakfast has a second name. It's S C H N A C K E N P F E F F E R H A U S E N. And I'm the magical man from Happy Land in a gumdrop house on Lollipop Lane. And finally, oh by the way, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> and finally, I'm just really angry about this episode. It doesn't matter who I am. Oh. Okay, move on. joining me in the dank is Danny BT and Sheridan. How are we going, guys? Um, that's relative. How am I going or how am I feeling? I'm, I'm, <laughs> how do you feel? I'm upset. Because <laughs> you know why we're upset? We just watched season 23, episode 22, Lisa Goes Gaga, a.k.a. the fucking Lady Gaga episode. Oh my God. Guys, <laughs> I know what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I am deeply, deeply offended by this episode. We kind of showed our hands on this one with all like the fist punching and the sharpening of knives. Yeah, we really had to... I had, had to keep replacing notebooks all over the place. It kept shredding them with the pen. We destroyed the dank, basically. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm actually really excited by how angry it's made me. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's rare to have one that you can really, really start just digging into, but this one is terrible. So, Sheridan, for your first episode of The Simpsons Index, you know, I like to ease people in, show them a good time. Come yeah, and then you throw them in the fucking deep end with this shit. <laughs> yep. Welcome to second episode, the yeah, one great. where I set things on fire yeah yep. no no longer an index virgin clearly yeah so it's clear we're all filled with hatred let's just go to the start with the narrator yeah so oh, for yeah. some reason it's narrated and it's not narrated by anyone this is i don't know if there's a term for it but i think of it like as a organic or narrator would be like in it shawshank was, redemption you know who's narrating it's Norman it was Freeman's like a big character. lebowski start yeah, but even that, eventually, you get revealed who the narrator, narrator yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. they well, did. Uh, it was revealed to be the dancer with the spangliest crotch or something. Uh, but it just still felt so out of place. But it just did not make sense. That's the thing. It's like this weird Dukes of Hazard intro, mm. and then it has no relevance to It anything. had one of the few jokes I liked, though. Yeah. Uh, Springfield, inventor of the brass knuckle, the Nigerian prince scam, <laughs> and the tomato something? Put Putting a slice, slice of tomato, tomato on your, on your cheese, cheese. Yeah. That's a fine, fine gag. Yeah, that's one of the two jokes I liked in this episode. Yeah, um, and then it goes into this whole, oh, ma, there's a storm a brewing. Yeah, it's like, and look, all the chickens laid, re- laid sparkle eggs. Wow, it's got to be that Lady Gaga coming. Oh, joy. It's like, <sighs> oh, just. Look, this might episode have doesn't stop um, just seriously loving on Lady Gaga. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I think you quickly overlooked the, the, the Wiggum bit. I think that was... Oh, yeah, the Ralph, and he's in the dog cone head and mm-hmm. he's a below-average kid, above-average dog. All the dogs look yeah. really impressed with him. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, whatevs, it's over. They forget that straight away. And mm-hmm. that actually really bugged me because Wiggum's always kind of known Ralph special, but he's never... He's always like, very made supportive. fun of him. Yeah. He's always very mm. supportive. He's always like, ah, that wiggle puppy. Ah, that talk has had so many adventures. Yeah. But in here he's like, Ralphie, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's actually really proud of him being a dog. Maybe. It's, it's... God, he's such a good dog. <laughs> Who's a good dog? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not sarcastic. Maybe. I'll, I'll you know what? It actually doubt. feels like this episode is go- constantly going, who is an awesome Lady Gaga? Who's our sparkly <laughs> pop princess <laughs> of the 20s and the 10s? Because for a long time on this podcast, this one has been a reference to how to not do a celebrity cameo <laughs> even in ones where the cameo is positive like mel- the mel gibson one they still do take a couple of shots they've mm. got you know oh he's just a dummy i know but he sells tickets yeah let's go uh, and you little things like that even the michael jackson one where oh, y- you think about a pop star that would probably have you know a really uh, fragile ego or something mm. yeah they take lots of shots and it seems like is, it's all in good where, humor where he's fat and white in a mental asyl- asylum yeah. yeah man absolutely uh, and yeah makes reference to it was weird that he brought a chimp to uh, as his date <laughs> to an award show yeah it's, um it has so- fun with it but this is just Oh, just wait. I wrote down that um, this is the Lady Gaga Saturday morning sparkle half hour with the Simpsons in it occasionally. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, going into it, are any of you as Lady Gaga fans? 
<laughs> how far that could be from the truth. <laughs> no, not whatsoever. I am completely indifferent. She could quit tomorrow. I wouldn't care. She could continue making records for the next 30 years. I couldn't care. Oh, I sure hope she doesn't. I mean, mm. whatever. It's, it's like most hated of all time. Really? That's really? how strongly I feel about Lady Gaga. Oh, oh, wow. Of all time. Mm-hmm. Even more than uh, Siley Myris? Yeah, she can do what she wants. She waves her ass in the air. I don't give a shit. But <laughs> Gaga, on the other hand, the very first time I saw the video for Poker Face, I thought it was a parody. <laughs> I, I thought I was watching a sketch show. Yeah, it's got that hyperbole of being so exaggerated that you couldn't yeah. even make fun of it in a parody. Yeah, and I remember <laughs> going, the mm. worst song I've ever heard. Mm. It, it was basically just, I thought I was watching, you know, a pff, whose line is it anyway, piss take something, you know. It yeah. was that bad. And then within six months, she's the biggest pop star mm. in the world. And that's the thing. I could have been indifferent on Lady Gaga, but there was just such a saturation of this and that rumba, rumba, ma, and the born this way and fucking less weird alpha coming out with the perform this way because <laughs> really calling her on her bullshit. Like. Well, you know what makes me the angriest, though, is she basically wrote every pop hit for the five years previous to her releasing Poker Face. Really? Like, yeah, oh, she's yeah, written so many huge first. songs that are good. Yeah. And that have done well. Like, you know, big pop hits, probably Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, those types of people she was writing for. I don't know off the top of my head. And they were good. And the chick can write. And she's a very intelligent businesswoman. And that's what makes me so fucking angry about how, like, disgustingly bad her own songs are. Yeah. The Lady Gaga songs. It just drives me up the wall. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like any of the pop stars. You can't deny sometimes they are good musicians. Um Especially the ones that, yeah, do write for other people. And then, yeah, that's what makes their solo material so disappointing. And, mm. you know, the stuff that she was releasing on her own, own, under her own name, Stephanie, whatever, you know, that was mm. fine piano ballad stuff. But anyway, I, I'm a bit... Dif- in di- uh, I'm a bit... Uh, Indifferent is fine. No, no, no. What's the <laughs> word? Uh, criticising unfairly. Uh, prejudice? Yeah, I've got prejudice because I'm a metalhead and I like my music brutal and, you know, everything needs to be rah, rah, rah. But not rah rah rah. Rah 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 rah. I've got God. a bad romance. She's gotten to you too. Yep. All right. That's enough uh, hate on Lady Gaga. Let's hate on no, Lady Gaga. No, never a bit enough. We so we I did, hated the. We never got Danny's opinion. It's oh. true. Um, look, I can see that her songs are really well produced. Um, they're generic pop trash that are sort of real. I don't like that she really aims at a demographic. Mm. Like, um. Katy Perry does the whole uh, all you special kids that have bad self-esteem feel good about yourself mm. and to me she's like a parallel of Lady Gaga without this sort of pretentiousness to it um, whereas Lady Gaga is trying to do the same all oh, you little monsters feel special blah, blah, blah. but at the same time she's like check out how fucking super Jesus I am yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Katy Perry, I could always be indifferent on because she's never claimed she's a musician. She's always claimed she, I'm just a performer, you know? Yeah, mm. sure. And, you know, but, uh, like, there's nothing wrong with with all her uplifting message. I don't listen to them, but they're they're well-produced and they're, they're, they're nice songs for nice people. Isn't yeah. that sweet? <laughs> and Lady Gaga's vaguely pretending to be the same thing, but also then she rips off her top and she's got, like, Superman underneath and she's... Yeah. Flies off into the sunset on the fucking Lady Gaga train. Can let's, can let's get back on. Oh, what the hell yeah, is going on here? Yeah, let's get back to this here? episode. Oh so my starts, god! Um, the Lady Gaga Express comes into town, and it's this flashy train. And I feel like they were trying to go for a parody on you know her lavishness and whatever. And they do the bit with the guy doing the calculations of how much this bullshit is costing, and that's kind of funny, but. Also, it spends too much time loving on her that it... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it never really? feels like it's parody. This... You may also have the problem of being, being hyperbole. That, uh, <laughs> I hyperbole! It starts with like the, the, the rainbow uh, wash out of the exhaust, and it's yep. with the big shoes going, like like a yellow submarine bit. The bra-shaped um, afterburners. Yeah. And... Mm. Um, I didn't like inside, well, all the dancers there, and then uh, in her limousine train she needs to get announced to her dancers for some reason announcing Lady Gaga to the, oh, to the dancers and the conductor guy now guys. we're producing the bad Lady yeah. Gaga it I'm, was such a bad voice and I, I usually like Kevin Michael Richardson's deliveries but yep. this was horrible but even mm. within that there's no jokes like it's there's like no due to Interscope Records a multi-international international superstar and many Grammy award winning uh, singer yeah, it feels Lady like it's Gaga. going it's like, for a self-referral joke but yeah but they, yeah. then they don't land one it's like part of me yeah. almost wondered whether 
the Interscope Records thing was because they had to say that. Yeah, it Maybe. felt contractual. Yeah. Um, was- by the way, did anyone notice that he was introducing her and then she walks in from the other end of the room? How did he even... Why does that... That doesn't work. How did... <laughs> well, in my opinion, this whole train bit is just full of a bunch of non-joke jokes where they're like, this is funny, right? Oh, she's got sense that Springfield needs perking up. And oh. that's, to me, this is like the beginning of, uh, you know... Her like, gaga sense is tingling. Yeah, no, yeah. They're, they're like yeah. The, it's like the beginning of the Super Friends where they're in the headquarters like, oh, we see some trouble in the world. Better go fix it. Yep. Whoosh. Yeah. And I hate in this intro where they do a total family guy style cutaway. Remember what happened at LaGuardia? Uh, uh, I've got too many <laughs> items. Hey, let's go party on the runway. Like, it's it's, uh, it's such a bad cutaway It's just cutaway fucking joke. infuriating, the <laughs> whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. We are so angry. <laughs> so we're not angry. just red because we're sweating because it's a fucking Australian hot summer day. Well, since you're talking about the Gaga sense tingling, what really, really annoys me about this episode, and I can't even tell you why, but when she does the little, oh, oh, I'm getting a, uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's just, drag why? That. They yeah. drag why? that so much. It's just annoying. There's but, no other reason for it. I will say, this. it does contain, there are actually three jokes like, and this is number two, and it's like, Springfield, the little tan- town that can't and won't. Yeah, that was yeah. great. <laughs> there are a couple of good sign gags in this one. That's yeah, about it. Yeah, Sister City with no one, not bad, not That's bad. Right. <laughs> but, then, but then she immediately goes to, we're stopping in Springfield there'll be no butts about it she turns around you can uh, see it but it's like get it butt has two different gratuitous meanings gratuitous yeah. is the bra scene in Star Trek Ooh. Into Darkness <laughs> um, uh. and yeah they as well go oh it's how you know Glee's a comedy and it's like oh, don't yeah. you go fucking saying this shit in this episode you know <laughs> mm. yeah pot point kettle. fingers mm. huh yeah. yeah but I suppose to get to what is essentially what I'm going to call the B plot because A plot is clearly gaga everything B plot is Lisa gets voted least popular in school for some reason because they have that as a category you can win and then feels bad and starts blogging, uh, secretly blogging that <laughs> she's actually great. And people are like, maybe you aren't so bad, Lisa. Wait, is that you secretly blogging this? Ah, oh, we all hate you now. It's like, mm. yeah. Look, this episode yeah. is so horrible to Lisa. And yeah, you're, this is a school-sanctioned award. You know, this for isn't some just reason. something... And list- Lisa's been very popular for 20 seasons. Everyone likes her. She's always helping people out and... She's not necessarily the most popular, but she was never the most hated or well, least liked. But had, no, the other thing I don't like about it is... That'd be the they, kid that throws up all the time? Oh, uh, yeah, Wendell. Wendell. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He only sides with Martin. One for Martin, <laughs> two for Martin. Um, but yeah, this episode is so mean to Lisa and they didn't need to do the whole award ceremony. It could have just oh. been the school's forum decided that she's the least popular. It didn't need to be a, an imaginary school sanctioned award, which it, doesn't exist. You really want to jump on Oh, this. no, no, that's cool. An award ceremony for like... 10 seconds and then the whole point of it was that was that Bart could say aren't award shows he goes from we're in the middle of an award ceremony where I'm winning awards he's like yeah but without award shows how would I know about Glee and, and yeah, yeah that's where it came from yeah. um, it's, it's you, you, <laughs> so yep. upset yeah. so cranky and really I guess the only joke in that part is um, you know Principal Skinner telling her to accept the award because they'll go easier on her if, if she does and then it's just like oh I don't know much about children yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. not but even bit. that was just like hmm I didn't mind the, the Bart pranky goes, award. The prank Bart you, got. prank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The lake arm with the jelly again. Like, come on. It's we've fine. had 25 years of The Simpsons. Mm. You can just do better. And that's the thing. That's what really bugs me is this is incredibly lazy. I mean, Lisa has had the not popular, feeling depressed, has no friends thing dozens of times at this point. But this is just so boringly lazy to go oh she got an award for it that's how unpopular she is oh look everyone's being mean it's just like yeah and it's unnecessarily mean it's not uh, like you know what uh, they say good writing means show it don't just say it right yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah show but, don't tell well yeah, there was one actual good sign gag coming into the assembly the award show which was mm-hmm. teachers carry less than 10 bucks yeah <laughs> oh, I love the, the, thing. the signs have been really good yeah, mm. it's like they've got a completely different group of writers <laughs> working on signs yeah just the yeah. signs team. Mm. Yeah, the one there was the writing team contractually obligated to say great things about Lady Gaga and the ones in charge of writing uh, signs. Mm. We okay. prize the we praise the sign writing writers. Sorry, another Thank big you thing for I want to quickly yell about. So we got you know truth teller is posting things on the school forums about how good Lisa is and how and then people start to warm to her, but oh no, they find out she's she's actually truth teller, mm-hmm. and it comes back to lie smeller, and then it finally comes back to Lady Gaga, who's like. Uh, oh no, I have to go help Lisa. She's been driving through Springfield on a train for about a day and a half at this point. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, How big is this place? It's not that big. <laughs> nope. 
Yeah. In fact, I'd say very few cities are big enough that you can drive through them for a day and a half. <laughs> it's a very circular train track. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Although, you worst. know, in the past they have managed to go, you know, Lisa's gone to some forest with giant redwoods. They've been to the lake on vacation. Yeah. They've been, you know, to wherever Kim Basinger lived. <laughs> You know, like there are all, all of these different areas in Springfield. Maybe yeah. it is huge. It might very well be, but it just really bugged me. Uh, yep. Yeah, and, no, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it really screwed with it's the space-time awesome. continuum. And look, I really hate these Cletus gags lately because they feel like they're just diverting to a bit of a he-horse, you know, comedy sketch segment. It's like a Family Guy cutaway. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, Gaga train passes Cletus's house. They're all, uh, oh, we gotta get off the hooch now. And then it ends with a joke about the embryo having a bottle of four X mm, moonshine in it. Yeah. Ugh, so terrible. <laughs> Act two. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God. Springfield, gather for the Gaga train. Can we just Ho- call this one a failure and move on with our lives? <laughs> <laughs> we have to accurately explain why it's a failure. Why it <laughs> All right, so All right. Lisa's upset in her room and Homer goes, hey, look at the TV that's mysteriously in Lisa's room that's never been there before. Yeah. Let's why go don't see we go Gaga. see the Gaga? Because yeah. everyone knows who she is and all love her. Mm. Yep, and then Homer does that, I've got to do things 17 times, I know. Like, okay, I initially like the joke when she's like, he's like, let's turn that frown upside down. She goes, this isn't a frown, it's a, smi- it's a straight line of indifference. And he goes, what? And turns her upside down. I was like, oh, it is too. And that, that was, I kind of like that joke. It was okay. But then he just starts turning her up and down. And goes, now I have to do things 17 times because that weird thing I have. Like, what? Yeah, what? that came out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Just um, like when Milhouse did the whole, I'm bad at keeping secrets. Just like when Milhouse did the whole, I'm suddenly at your dinner table in the middle of dinner. Uh, just to yell <laughs> I didn't think about line. that. Why is Milhouse there? Just because they wanted, uh, they wanted a ca- they wanted him to be the, the red herring for the, for, for, for the forum gag. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they make have, you think it's he's truth teller and yeah. Then why set it in the dinner mm. table? Why not set it somewhere uh, like Millhouse or, or anywhere yeah. else? Or have him at the dinner table already for some reason, you know? Yeah. Uh, not unreasonable, but it does bring up questions. Mm. Um, you asked so, before who the writer of this one was, Tim Long. Fuck Fucking that Tim guy. Long. We've encountered you before, you son of a bitch. Fuck you, Tim Long, seriously. You <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Long. Episodes. You can do uh, better. I, I, I think you can do better, man. I believe in you. Unless he wrote those signs, in which case, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? Stick to, stick to signs, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's strong. Look, he not, hears this podcast and he goes, that's it. I'm yeah. going straight to the sign writing game. Not, not everyone <laughs> needs to be good at everything. Some people are good at writing episodes. Some people are good at writing signs. So let's just focus on your strengths, mate. <laughs> Maybe the Gaga thing was just about Tim Long secretly believing in himself. <laughs> you know, trying oh. to take her advice. And... But, th- but then there's the overall message of this one, which is so bad. <laughs> this makes sense now. So this happened to Tim Long when he was in primary school. Ooh. He was uh, voted least popular. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a cry for help. Yeah. <laughs> then he started writing signs. Tim, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Don't it's worry, man. L- Lady Gagger's on a train direct to Hollywood right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, just right to your door. It'll take her a really long time because that train apparently does not move very fast. Nope. But Even with the afterbranas. Mm-hmm. Burn it, bras, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So the town gathers and goes all um, garba goobal. What's that from, freaks? We ex- one of us, wabba goobal, garba oh, goobal. Yeah, yeah, were they doing that? Was that, was that, yeah, the that I, doing? I thought so. I thought they were just going gaga, 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 because everyone's just. I thought it was a reference. Everyone is anyway. on board, maybe. Everyone's um, on board, though, yeah. yeah and this and is the it's part- time for songs. Uh, we're well, not even. Oh, oh yeah. No. So she starts singing some ridiculous bloody song. I don't know. I, um, I think it's her song, Little Monsters, with altered lyrics. Whatever. But I mean, the part that kills me here is Grandpa just goes, I love you, Lady Gaga. It's like, that's not even. Why is he? No, why does he even know I who think she he is? Said, like Yaya or something. Like Jaja, Jaja, like Jaja Jaja. 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 Jaja Gabor, famous uh, ah, uh, model, you. celebrity, celebrity from six million. Okay. She died this year, by the way. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. her. All right. I, I thought I, I heard Gaga. I, I may be wrong. I'm going to assume that I'm wrong because at least that's then a joke. Yeah, I, I thought it joke. was a gift gift joke or something. Yeah, that works too. Okay, mm. I'll um, I'll slowly. i uh, see. I was going to remove some of my hate, but then I re- read my ne- next note, and I'm angry Got even again. Go for it, man. I oh, know it's late. I will get there. All right. So yeah, in short, she does a stupid song, and she notices Lisa in the crowd. Put a spotlight on her, ha ha ha, because she's had all too much attention lately. Yeah. Um, I do kind of like the joke where she goes incognito, but then her jacket is still flashing Gaga. up. Gaga, right. Gaga. Yeah, well, mm. it's one of those jokes I would like if everything else around it wasn't so bad. Yeah. yeah, they're walking past the cicada noise and she's like, oh, just the buzzing of the paparazzi. Mm. Yeah. I think by the time they get around to any sort of half-decent joke in this episode, you're already too grumpy from the <laughs> shit that came before it. So it's not even funny. an exhausting episode in that yeah. way. Like, anger can only last so long. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, <laughs> there was one um one good Marge line before we uh, go any further when they were looking at the online notice board and she said something along the lines of, it takes a lot of courage to post nice things online anonymously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the one line in this episode I liked. Yep. Yeah. That is nice. And we'll get back to another Marge bit soon. But first, Mm -hmm. um, there was the weird Flanders exchange as well. Oh, wow. I thought there was way better ways for Flanders to stick up for himself, but he got baffled at the first fucking defense she had, and it wasn't even a good one. Yeah, and the whole point of Flanders usually is that he can throw Bible verses at you to, you know. Yeah, he shouldn't be that easily stumped. And not even to the Bible verse. He's just that traditional, wholesome kind of person Mm. who would have a problem with this, you know, very lavish and uh, sexualized kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yes, he's wholesome, but he's also the forgiving one. His wife is is very conservative like mm. that, but he's very, he's like Captain Forgiveness and Mercy and shit. Yeah. Um, he was. They turn they turn him more into like a Westboro Baptist fucking yeah. Um, as the episodes go on, yeah, mm. he becomes yeah, more really extremist. Terrible. Yeah, well, he really does. All right, let's say that. The, the real problem with that section is that that whole thing could be cut and nothing would have changed. That was yep. totally irrelevant to even a subplot. There wasn't like a, a finish line to that. There was just like, hi, I'm here. Bye, I'm gone. But I forget, think this is forget the, I ever existed. This is the episode's plot line of, here's a critic of Lady Yaga. Oh, he got shut down. Yeah. That's oh, how great she is. Weak. Ugh. Weak. Like, I, oh. That's, that's, that's what that is. There's no reason for it to be there other than that one little point. He doesn't give a joke. He doesn't have a... You know, a bit of a mocking criticism, you're kind of a joking, having fun with a celebrity cast. It's just, oh, she took him down. What, what? This, this Bible bashing Christian tried to take down Lady Gaga. What she says yeah. next will leave you yeah. stunned. She used her Gaga <laughs> powers on him. Yeah. Could have done like the thing where she zaps him and suddenly he's wearing like meat suits and yeah, fucking flamboyant. That would have at least been kind of a chuckle. And yeah. given the. Uh, he's covered in mustaches. Yeah. And given the like absurdness of this episode, that would have been sort of acceptable in the timeline. But yeah, it was dumb. What do you think of the flash mob gag that came afterwards? So close to being good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. It, it was good for a second, and then it just kept going and getting worse you know and worse. I'm going to say, I like the gag. What I hated was there was... It feels like in this is the message where like, Gaga's trying to give her very like shallow advice and very, mm. you know, um, very shallow life advice to fix her problem, which is obviously a lot deeper. Yep. And what it kind of goes for for like a half second is, no, I have serious problems that can't be glossed over by saying, feel good about yourself. Yeah. Mm. So the flash mob is a funny gag, but I don't like that it wasn't underpinned by, I'm going to need more than a flash mob to make me not feel miserable. Mm. And Lisa says this, Lady Gaga with all due worship. I know. And, and I, it's know like, I know. Oh, it gets worse later. <laughs> Little too much for Lisa. But I mean, this is this is as close to critiquing her as this episode goes, oh, except mm. for the, the rant later. But um. Mm. I mean, th- isn't this sort of saying that Gaga's approach to her fans is 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 bo- groundless yeah, and is shallow and, and yeah, meaningless? She's she's shallow. She's meaningless. Her, she doesn't help anybody. <laughs> Maybe that is the whole metaphor for the episode. But they have to have a really bad uh, episode uh, anyway. It's- I know. But then I know. at the end, it turns out that she did help Lisa, and so yeah, and they, they praise didn't her even, again. I want to say she did, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, what can you do? So yeah. in the last ditch, uh, oh yeah, and uh, Bart comes in with Maggie and goes, check it out, it's baby Gugu and she's got the pacifiers on her boobs. It feels yep. really weird for a baby joke. Like It really does. It's like, it's like when, she, when she did the Britney bit uh, in, yeah. the, in last week's episode or the week before. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But it would have felt a little more tasteful if she'd been wearing a dress made out of pacifiers. Oh yeah. Because that would have been a Gaga yeah. bit. Take yeah. something ridiculous, True. make a dress out of it. She looked a little too Dame Edmary for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've been sexualizing Maggie a bit much. Yeah. Recently. That sounds like a weird thing to say. Yeah. Ah! I know. Hey, the Simpsons did it. I know, man. What the fuck? <laughs> so Lady Gaga has cookies with Marge. Oh my, yes. This and does she? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Marge and is like, I try so hard, but it's so hard to be the mother of someone who's so smart and sensitive and talented. And it's, I want to help her, but she's already so advanced that just the usual mom, I'll just have some milk and cookies bit doesn't work. Marge has never had any trouble giving her advice before. She's yeah. always giving no, her. I like that. Mm. It's a very humanizing point for Marge where she's yeah never had pro- problems before, but Lisa's so advanced that her problem is going to be very advanced. And keeping up with that is obviously very difficult. And Gaga's like, oh, I don't have anything to help, except I'm going to make out with you now and then kisses. And I'm like, well, before that, okay. <laughs> Marge suddenly has this big intimacy issues with anyone touching her. Has that yeah. ever been a thing ever? No, no. I didn't get that either. She's but, always been on hugs and stuff. Well, mm. from that scene, the one thing I did get out of it, one thing Marge says, as you mentioned, she's so smart, she's so talented, something like plays an instrument so well, one that I don't really care for. Oh, yeah. You know, referring to the sax. So from that point, if you hadn't seen this episode before, I remember the first time I watched this one, 
I thought what was going to happen from there is Gaga would ask Lisa to join her band on oh. sax. Oh, play sax. She would become yeah. a superstar that and then so all the people sense. in the playground would love her again. Way better. Because they all love Gaga. Way and Lisa's better. playing with Gaga. Oh, yeah. that would have been so much better. But instead you end up with Marge fucking making out with Lady Gaga, having sex with Homer and then going back to the shitty, shitty storyline. Yep. Yeah. Oh. So, like, uh, what? what, what is that the whole thing that Gaga is just like a? I felt like there there was a point. There should have been a point to that sudden sexual charge. Is that like implying Marge's lesbianism and she's sort of taking it out by sexuality? Sorry, um, uh, it's like taking it out on Homer. Um, or I honestly don't know what the point of that was. I don't either. Like it's. I think I, it was just there so they could have a. Oh, Marge did a lesbian kiss. Look how uh, progressive we're being. Or, yeah. Or look how hot it gets Marge. Being. This is all your nerds' fantasy. Yeah. You've always wanted to see Marge make out with Lady Gaga. Here it is. Mm, mm. Fucking Tim Long. He's yeah. a pervert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's find this Tim Long and give him a stern talking to. Him. Fucking um, cold but I mean, shower. Just, again, to bring it to say, like the Mel Gibson one uh, episode where. Marge starts thinking about him and then turns up and goes, Homer, let's snuggle. Turns out the yeah. light is like, you think about yeah. me? That's I got a similar thing where she gets so charged by the idea of the celebrity that becomes a sexual energy thing. But just in this, it felt so horribly, stupidly wrong. She mm. just suddenly just grabs and kisses Marge when Marge has already been uncomfortable with being touched. Mm. It's like, that kind of makes you horrifying as a person. <laughs> I don't like that they drop it as well. Like, straight, mm. if, if, that, if there was something with that, with Marge, like, uh, if they explore that Marge has a has a thing for celebrities or yeah or has a know. thing for women and then it yeah. turns into an extra subplot you know Easy. anything could but have brought a just... B plot out of that yeah it was um, just all over and done with so anyway Lady Gaga is preparing to go she's wearing her famous meat dress and I like that Homer's <laughs> grilling it that's yeah. a yeah. fine yeah. bit but they do drag it out too long anyway and then the roundabout Lisa Roulette just more kids piling shit on Lisa mm-hmm. and. Yeah, and then Gaga arrives in an egg and then cries tears of diamonds. And... No, no, before that, we have the even worse, worse part where Gaga's trying to try cheer Lisa up. Lisa's like, you don't get this. I have problems. You're just saying, be be happy. It's not working. Again, would have really been a good point if they'd actually pinned it down, but it was just so... Anyway. Well, yeah, but, she no, no. makes a good point where, Gaga, this has all been about you. And I'm like, yeah, go, Lisa. Boom, rip her apart. But again, it doesn't mm. drive that. It's just like, eh. but the really part of the sentence, Lisa then goes, I denounce thee. Oh, yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, because Gaga was your religion until now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you gave up jazz more dramatically than, sorry, less dramatic than you giving up Gaga, who you've never mentioned before or again. Mm. Also, she said thee like 30 times. That's the thing, because obviously this is like a biblical moment for her, yeah. apparently. And that's just, oh, it's This, so this comes after she said worship, right? Yeah, this is where with all due worship. And then now it's like, I denounce thee. Like, there, yeah, because apparently Lady Gaga is your god and everyone else is god, apparently. Yeah. And just expressing through oh. the tail end of the episode, there's a decent gag with Homer climbing up the wrong tree house. Yeah, the last, That's fine. The last positive joke it's I like. fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it would have been funny in the context of a better episode, I reckon. Mm. Um, but at this point in the episode, we're all so exhausted. We're just begging for it and fucking slicing our wrists with the paper in our was notebooks. There a bit where one of the backing singers was like, can we kill her? Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, with like, someone's not loving you, so let's just silence her quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Homer sits down with Lisa and has a conversation with her about, you know, you know I can't remember what he says, but he's basically just, I can't, does anyone remember what he says at this point? He's sitting down with Cheating her on my here. diet, something, something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's all, tries to help her out, and she goes, thanks, Dad. Listening to you talk was so easy to drown out, I finally got a few minutes' peace to think for myself. And it's like, yeah, Homer tries to help you. <laughs> Fuck you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's so annoying. Like, he's genuinely trying to be a good person here. Is he's he not being... saying, Poor look, Homer. just cheat, just just, just cheat. Well, he's, he's he's giving her the advice that he uses. Now, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's yeah. good advice, but yeah, he's yeah, trying. Yeah. He's not being jerk-ass Homer going, you know, Lisa, you have a problem. Stop it. It's more... You know, you know, Lisa. You should. Just, you don't act out on your feelings. You just bottle them all up until they explode in one moment of violence. Like when yeah. I hit that referee with a whiskey bottle. Remember that when Daddy <laughs> when hit the Daddy referee? Hit the referee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Lisa goes and thanks La- Lady Gaga for allowing her to release all of her hatred in one um, sitting. And then they're like, and she's like, "Oh, great, good for you, Lisa. Now let's sing." Mm. BT, do you feel better after having released all your hatred in one sitting? I've got more. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really, not, I'm really, not done uh, with notes. Have you seen his notebook? Yeah. The next few oh, words shit. are just no over and over and over again. <laughs> it's about eight lines of no. Uh, 
Yeah, so they sing the Lisa Simpson superstar. Oh, oh, that this... cut into the musical number was terrible oh, as well. I've got to say, the two songs in this episode, which I assume were written by Gaga for the mm. episode, I could be wrong on that, but they're fucking terrible. Like, even ten times worse than her actual songs, which are yep. already as terrible as you can get. Just shocking. Like, even when Bart joins a boy band, those songs are better than these songs. Another episode written by Tim Long. I assume... Oh, really? That was not bad, though. Um, yeah, no. I assume this was written by Tim Long looking at a picture of Lady Gaga drooling on a page and then mm. seeing what words they spelled. <laughs> <laughs> gaga, 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 Gaga. <laughs> the, my big problem with this episode really gets underlined in this song where, okay, so Lisa shows up and says, uh, I've taken all the years of rejection and neglect and I've thought, and I've put it on my, all my hatred onto you. And it's just like, you still have all that hatred though. You still have problems. She's like, and she for a moment has a moment of, uh, I like, but I like who I am. I'm, you know, kind and I'm nice to people and I'm, you know, intelligent, yada, yada. It's got, it's so close to having a, again, having a moral, but then it just uh, sucks Falls at doing flat. it by going, and I've learned to hate you, which is why I love you now. And let's sing together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then the song's in entirely the wrong key for Lisa. Cause oh, I've yeah. heard her she's, sing in a lot of episodes before and she's actually got quite a sweet little voice. Yeah. Yeah. The vocal delivery one, is so mm, bad. Yeah, oh, I cannot like, hit it. Um, Horrible. But yeah, then Mo dies. Yep, Mo dies. <laughs> totally gets hit by a train, dies. Narrator comes back and goes, well, did this all really happen? I can tell you it did because I'm Lady the... Lady Gaga's just like... Oh, he's like, save us! And Lady Gaga whispers, no! Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets hit by a train, dies. Yep. Grandpa, yeah. for some reason, is being held on a Danny Jack chair mm. with birds and then uh, does a little post credit song of Homer singing... Uh, my ha ha homer face. Yeah, which it I, is arrogant and as annoying as it sounds. It's terrible, and I wrote that it's like salt rubbing salt into the amputation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's time for the questionnaire. Woo. All right, time for that questionnaire. That question, questionnaire. Nope. No. I will throw things at you, mm. and we're back. <laughs> and we're back. Um, <laughs> Storyline wise, yeah, kind of a, kind of b-ish, but ultimately just terrible. Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? No. Huh? No. As I said before, this was a Lady Gaga show with The Simpsons in it. How many times do you think you've seen it? Probably three against my will. Wow. <laughs> Who held you down? Ugh. <laughs> Lady Gaga's dancers. <laughs> yeah. Kill her. <laughs> uh, I've seen it once before. I, re- I remember it being bad. I do not remember it being this bad. Mm. I have never seen it. Thank you so much, Elliot, for inviting yeah. me here today. For it's only my the life. second time I've seen it because I watched it the first time and I. Against, like, my better judgment, I sat through it the first time because maybe it gets better at the end. Well, you want to know, yeah. It was mm. one big, fat disappointment, Elliot. It is. Um, I, th- I think this show is a testament to, like, you know, the musicians who stayed on the Titanic as it sank? <laughs> <laughs> That's really what we're doing here. We're going to be there. We're going to stand in the house till the house burns down. Yeah. <laughs> Wackiness. Yep. Oh, my God, all of it. Yeah. Gaga train. The whole train, Yeah. Mo dying horribly. We'll miss Mo. He was a good... Uh, yeah. Tears of Diamonds. Yeah. Um, I everything do, I Gaga. We'll say I like the line when she's crying Tears of Diamonds goes, yeah, I'm, they're diamonds. It hurts. <laughs> it's like hell. But again, would have been better if everything else hadn't sucked. Who felt the heart in this episode? I felt my heart I dying. I will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a heart loaded with... A dead heart loaded with embalming fluid. It was... It wasn't there. It was ashes. It was cremated. Mm. I felt the uh, wank... <laughs> That's certainly there in spades. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so much wank. Um, yes or no, would you watch this episode again? No. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> now the comedian over here. Yep, someone, <laughs> someone would have to like clockwork orange me to get me to watch this again. <laughs> Which is why we've just brought in this fancy chair and eye openers. Fuck. Gun to the head, I'd probably still take the gun. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Shoot me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let's rank this thing. Failure. Yep, failure. Failure. Do I even have to say it? I no. Don't, you have to say <laughs> it. Just failure. For the, all right, that was easy. Go yeah. is, is there such a thing as dull failure? I know you've been no. doing the dulls lately. Can no, there be? Four failures. Don't we like press the button and explode the whole... Yeah. Uh, I flirted with the idea of a meltdown nah. ranking. And if it's like mm. that bad of a failure and everyone agrees, we all turn our keys and um, yeah, initiate nah, the meltdown. I, I, I like the idea of having just one episode designated as the definite worst. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is beating what to expect when Bart's expecting for me. Yeah, I'm... Mm, I really this can't is as low as I've sunk. 
so far. But who yeah. knows what tomorrow will bring? <laughs> <laughs> but tomorrow is another index. Yeah, another I mean, day. you two judge that one. What do you think? Is this? I'm, I'm really trying to decide if this is worse than Ooh. that one. Say, this is definitely worse than what to expect when Bart's expecting because at least that was like so many ridiculous plot points that it stayed interesting. And on my second viewing, watching it with you guys, I was laughing because like, oh, they won't see this bullshit coming. Mm. <laughs> but this one, it just keeps driving home that they love Lady Gaga and she's in this episode and it's it's T tedious like they keep hitting the same points over and over again where at least with that one they were going to different things so in its ridiculousness it remained interesting but this one not only was bland but it was terrible so yeah. i'm gonna i'm bland gonna and exhausting <gasps> i'm gonna say what to expect is worse for the exact same reasons because at yeah. least at least this one keeps a consistent through line and doesn't make huge logical jumps and doesn't have everyone suddenly believing in voodoo for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Which still is just mind-boggling. It's uh, it's tough, and if someone said this was worse, I wouldn't, I'm wouldn't. i not going to disagree in terms of arguing, but I think this one is marge... I don't want to say the word better in <laughs> reference no, to either of don't. them, but less horrid. Fair enough. So, you know, it's like saying, well, yeah, I've got tuberculosis, at least I don't have leprosy. Still don't want either of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, let's go to our teens episode, an episode from the awkward teen years. It's going to be season 13, um, A Hunker Hunker Burns in Love. Yeah. Mm. You know how good this episode is going to look by Yeah, comparison? that's right. This yeah. is going to be cubic I'm zirconia enjoying. all over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it already. <laughs> Silver. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get to it. in position yeah mm-hmm. sure yeah huh sure yep. right on, right on. okay check check please <laughs> <laughs> oh god it's sweaty in here and we are back and we just watched season 13 episode 4 a hunker hunker burns in love and this is the one where um, after getting inspired by a fortune cookie that Homer wrote Mr. Burns um, goes and seeks love and finds uh, love in a meter maid but needs to get the wingman Homer mm-hmm. um, to help him look more youthful and stuff and um, and yeah there's more to it but we'll get to that um, guys a what a what a did you think I liked it loved it me too. Thought it was great. It's again. It's hard to tell if this is just coming off such a bad one. Yeah. If yeah. I like it more, but you know what? It's, it's fun. It's not. It, I, I don't. I love Mr. Burns. Basically, he's my favorite yeah. character, and uh, he's got some great lines. In so they many. really push his like Burnsiana sort of oh, line, yeah. but it's so good. It's great. Yeah. No bad moments in this one. I thought. Oh, uh, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll a get few. to that. <laughs> I kind of moments so nothing that made you want to throw things at your TV and then apologize to you. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> there are so many scratches yeah, on my about TV. That, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I signed TV up for this. Coming. I signed up for this when I started The Simpsons Index. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> give me the excuse to get a new TV. There will be hate thrown, that one. Yeah. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, man. What time is it? It is time to get through the story. So it starts out in uh, the Simpsons are going through Chinatown. And they've got a sort of mix of racist and uh, kind of funny gags here. I like Toys at a loss. Yeah. Oh. Yep. I, it's one of those things where it's I like the cheap. line, they need to stop picking on Tibet Town, but then we cut to Tibet Town. Then they if show. If it was just the line, I would yeah. have liked it more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was actually a rare instance where it's like, tell, don't show. Yeah. I mean, it happens <laughs> occasionally, but this is one of those ones where yeah, it would have been funnier as a line. Yeah. And they're at the restaurant and Bart's ordering the shark butt suit. This is just feels like they're copying the joke from Itchy and Scratchy World I where love it, but... they're ordering the baby guts and Marge oh, yeah. is horrified. Like, yeah. It's the same thing. Marge is horrified. And... But I still love the sentence, I'll have the shark butt suit with butt sauce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll have the 12 happiness. How's the 12 happiness with joy- double joy Very sauce? How is that? Very yeah. disappointing. <laughs> um... Uh, what else? Um, yeah, Lisa and the vegetarianism. How can we kill an animal to help your meal and whatever? Yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was okay. It wasn't so heavy-handed that it was preachy, but it was also it wasn't a great joke. It was okay. Yep, but so, they didn't dwell on it. Mm, yeah, Seconds exactly. later. Yeah, this exactly. whole episode, I think, was very quick. Mm. Mm. Sort of joke, then move on. Yeah, and it wor- it worked most of the time. I've got to say, I just I just didn't think this first act was that strong. No, it's pretty weak at the beginning, but I think it gets better. Um, so then they get their fortune cookies, crack them open. Homer's a bit disappointed; they're all a bit lame. Yeah, geese are annoying, and um... and then they he like asks the waiter to explain them because the waiter, of course, is the source of all fortune cookie <laughs> yeah. wisdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
But I don't like how he does the callback. These fortunes are terrible. What is the problem? These fortunes are terrible. Yeah, it's one of those rare <laughs> double explain that actually work. Yeah. No, sometimes I like a good repeated cadence joke. <laughs> oh my. Takes him to the back room, whereas there's all the tiny typewriters, and that's what Woody Allen's doing these days, apparently. Mm. Yeah. And the tiny bin for when he screws up. Yeah. To throw <laughs> the, tiny like, fortunes yeah the tiny in. typewriter um, <laughs> yes. frame as well. Yeah. So, who, does anyone know who that other writer is with that horrible, horrible accent? No. Although I am curious, um, because when they go back to the fortune ri- cookie writing place, there's a sign on the door written in Chinese, and they 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 kind of hold frame on it for a few seconds it's like i assume that's a sign gag but i don't speak any so if you in the comments can leave what the hell that says <laughs> yeah. that would be great or tweet us at simpsons index yep all three what of our listeners say? i hope there's a chinese one in amongst you all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever i mean mm. i'm curious but also i couldn't be bothered like googling it Thanks indeed yeah there was a joke which i hate and like which was the um, Woody Allen going, oh, he reminds me of a young me. And then someone else goes, oh, young me was like way, way better than him. Oh. Yeah, it's one of those oh. such a bad pun, but it's kind of funny. Mm. <laughs> so Childish yeah. racism. Yeah, well, it's not so much racism. Young me is quite probably a you know Chinese name. I'm sorry. Leave you a reply sorry. in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Homer starts, uh, is employed by them to be the new fortune cookie writer. And he goes home and starts dictating and for Lisa to type out. And I like that gag with the Chinese t- keyboard. Are you getting all this, Lisa? I like, don't know. <laughs> That's really cute. Oh, and okay. So then it starts to get into the actual plot where the Chinese delivery guy gives Mr. Burns the Chinese food. And then uh, it's like Chinese food delivery guy saying tip is customary. Mr. Burns does that horrible, horrible line. <laughs> it's very old fashioned pidgin English, though. Yeah. It is an old fashioned racist joke yeah mm. i mean it speaks to mr burns as a character that he would do that you know yeah i don't even know if i can repeat it without don't do it man invoking the anger of all our chinese listener <laughs> <laughs> no go on you can say it because you're quoting a thing you're not saying this so we right. still need them to leave a comment about young me and the writer's room which i've just googled the name young me and there have been plenty of hits so uh take that Hmm. They're all just Simpsons, reference. Simpsons podcasts, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to mention a few of the fortunes that came up before that, though. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, sea captain, you will take a short sea voyage. <laughs> yeah. I will the enjoy that. The price of stamps will increase. Yeah. And I like Homer's one. Your story's being robbed up, who? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he is actually a pretty good fortune writer. Hmm. It's not bad. I've read worse. I've and read yeah, it turns out one of the fortunes he mentioned, you'll find love on Flag Day. Yep. And uh, Mr. Burns gets that fortune. And um, what do you reckon of the whole breaking the cookie gag? Loved it. Yep. Yeah. It's very Burnsian. Very Mr. Burns. Burns the, it's very always the thumbs. Yeah. Maybe a little overdone. Like mm-hmm. having having him try to lift it was enough. He didn't Ooh, have to break his thumb. There appears to be a communique. <laughs> Capital. <laughs> Capital. I, love, I do like to say communique. Oh, yeah. yeah. There is so many great Burnsians. I couldn't note them all down. But this mm. is a... It says Boulder Dash at some point. Oh. I want to start saying Boulder Dash. I do Dash. super love uh, when he's like, you'll find love on Flag Day. Why today is Flag Day? Come on, Smithers. Let's go womanizing. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the best term for that. <laughs> Yep, um, and yeah, a bit of a Smithers gay joke where I'm standing right in front of you, sir. And he's like, oh, don't joke now. We need to go womanizing. Hmm. Um, And yeah, so he's flirting with the, well, I never woman. And I like, he turns around for a second and the Monopoly man (laughs) riding off the (laughs) Monopoly. Oh, every, Penny Bags takes all the good angles. Well, these people are pure Baltic Avenue. (laughs) (laughs) Just before that, let me freshen your Thomas Collins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and there was a reference to Joan Collins uh, later. I wonder if they're related. Yeah, poor Joan. Who is Joan Collins? I don't know. Total slut. Mm. Oh, so I do super love the line following that going up. Uh, between Mr. Moneybags and everybody else, all the best ankle is taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pansy and I don't love it. It's only got the sign outside, girls, girls, girls. Oh, what if any girls are in here? Take girls it away, inside. man. What'd you love about it? <laughs> It's one of those. Oh, it's one of those naked female fire stations. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I love and that Smith so is cornered by twerking girls. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so yeah, deflated, deflated, defeated. You know what? Both deflated works as well. Deflated. Yeah, that can. That, there's my new twerge. <laughs> um, uh, Burns goes back to his car and he's getting a ticket. I <laughs> like how it was just Sorry, parked in the middle of the road. Can I say, you just said the word twerge. Uh, for listeners in home, a twerge is a portmanteau where the words two words merged, which is three words merged. Mm-hmm. Because fuck you. And I invented it. 
Go on Urban Dictionary. EJO86. That was me, motherfucker. For reals? Yep. High five I'll... from across the room. Anyway, so he meets Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Yep, who's always great and everything. Mm-hmm. Except for that stupid Actually. new adventures of old Christine, but whatever. Yeah, that was terrible. She started in another sitcom that wasn't called Elaine, but the name was really close to it. It was like a lease or something. <laughs> but you're quite a fan of the, um, her new show, aren't you? Yeah, Veep Veep. more than makes up for all of it. Yeah. Just oh. by far. There has never been a better script written for that woman. Nice. Yeah. But quick, can we take a moment to appreciate that our government took the slogan from Veep? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Continuity unintentionally and with change. change. With yeah. change, that's right. And Veep is like, we tried to write the dumbest thing we could think yeah, of. The dumbest, most meaningless. And our government's like, that's amazing. Let's steal that. <laughs> and now we'll drink turpentine. I'm Mac and Turnbull, and I don't get irony. <laughs> no. Fucking arsehole. Like, what a dick. Who would hold gay marriage hostage just for spite? What a <clears throat> cunt. Anyway. Okay. Julie Louise Dreyfus. Mm. Um, <laughs> Again? Is sort of a meter maid slash... Uh, Police lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's ticketing Burns' car because it's parked in the middle of an intersection. <laughs> I do yeah. like. I told her we should have parked on the curb. So <laughs> <it's the middle laughs> of the like he couldn't be walk rather walking to the side. Well, it's for the common man. Twelve seconds left of Flag Day. Picks her up. Mm -hmm. Oh, he kills it there. He's just like, mm -hmm. how do you feel about old men that still live with their mothers? Yeah. And she's just like, <laughs> well, he's like, oh, would you submit to a wooing by a gentleman <laughs> called? <laughs> that's submit right, that's to right. a wooing. Yeah, things we have to take away. We're going womanizing <laughs> yes. and submit to a wooing. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, another great line. Calling? I can't. Uh, anyway, whatever. Mm. And uh, Smithers goes, here, um, go hire yourself a petticoat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, um, so that's actually where Smithers sort of leaves this episode, and yeah, for a long time. And then I guess the weird thing is Homer becomes. Oh no, we do the get Smithers. there. Okay. More or less Smithers. Smithers. Mm. Yeah, but um, so he takes her on the first date. She, there are some great lines here, like uh, I never met someone who knew Calvin Coolidge. I looked it up. Calvin Coolidge was the thirtieth president of the United States who died in nineteen thirty three. Oh. oh. And uh, and then he goes, oh, I've never dated a woman with her own hair and teeth. And they laugh and quick visual gag. He pulls out a magnifying glass and looks closer. <laughs> it's great. They don't call attention to it. Beautiful. Is Just that quick. sort of implying that he hasn't dated someone before he was like 900 years old? Yeah, that is a problem we do know he in fact has uh, in Mr. Burns' son episode. He's... Uh, 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 he's all yeah. like this line um, I saw my old flame who was you know aged and withered her slightly but I saw past those imperfections to her 20 year old daughter Lily <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I like how uh, she's like oh what other young things do you like to do and he goes oh I like to and he's looking around the fair pilot motor coaches and, and pick, uh, up pick up dog up... waste <laughs> yeah. pilot motor coach is another great Burnsism <laughs> uh, dog so waste good. I like when she's commenting on what she admires about him something like you know, you're always laughing and tenting your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you that's think what she said, tenting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you think okay. everything is excellent. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. And then when she says it later, like now that I know that's Julia so Louis-Dreyfus, it makes it funnier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and, and then he goes to drop her off and he's like, can I see you again? And she's like, oh, well, you're pretty Can I invite old. you inside to play the clavichord? <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, go on. If you know what I mean. Uh, she's like, well, look, you're nice, but you're super old. And then Homer's walking past for some reason. And he's like, help me woo this woman by telling her how hip I am. Mm. Paraphrasing. Come here, fatty, pie. and make me look good. <laughs> There'll be There's a pie, a pie in, in it. it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. No, 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 no. I was, I was stepping on your well, toes. Well, you guys know what, what what was said. But then he's like, oh, she, he, Mr. Burns is outrageous. He kidnapped the Loch Ness Monster, ran his own casino, was shot by a baby, and blotted out the sun. And she's like, oh, that was you? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, because it was all stuff that happened to Burns. Yeah, no, I like that they didn't pull any bullshit out. It was all stuff that actually happened within episode. Yeah. So she's impressed by that, and Homer gets a pie randomly from the windowsill. I didn't think much of that joke. Of the crazy cat lady? Was that the crazy cat lady in curlers and, like... Uh, a... Yeah, same voice. Yeah, nah. definitely a Tress McNeil, definitely. So anyway, uh, he uh, Burns takes um, both of them out to a nightclub because Homer's his wingman now. Yep. And um, I like it how she goes, wow, you can really shake it, Mr. Yeah. Burns. And he's yes, like, and that was voluntary. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's on my yeah, notes as well. Oh, and then they're sitting at the table and S Simpson, place my hand on her knee. I oh, said yeah. hand. Um, I said her. <laughs> not your and dick knee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was not basically implied dick. that yeah. <laughs> Homer made Burns jack him off. <laughs> and yeah, I love the visual bit. You think Burns is carrying uh, Gloria up the stairs, but yeah. it's Homer carrying the both of them. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was a yeah. great close-up to wide shot. 
And joke. then they do make their love physical, as is the style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, with Don't that needle just... Viagra thing. I love everything about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, what was the animal it was extra- extracted from? Uh, uh, it was uh, made from the pockets fox. of a pocket fox. Pocket fox. <laughs> <laughs> it existed for like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he gets all charged up and Homer looks at a used needle and thinks... Oh, why, why not? not? Yeah, but I forgive that for the following scene where he's just running Marge upstairs <laughs> drooling. Yeah, oh, unintentional yeah. theme, spontaneous Marge and Homer sex. I love unintentional themes. Oh. Let, let's see if it carries on oh, into the yeah, next yeah. one. And then, oh, I hope the kids didn't hear it. <laughs> but Lacey's just wide-eyed and then it kind of cuts to a Flanders next door. Yeah. Wow. And he's just like, wow. <laughs> so they do a montage over a sort of and then I saw a face style song. It wasn't that song, but... Um, Classic Lady in the Tramp spaghetti bit. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, montage They're... of Homer helping. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I love how he revives him at the tree as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just Did you Burns need whatever. help to eat noodles? Was that a, was, there was a straw so yeah. he didn't have to actually eat the noodle? I mean, um, I don't think yeah, you can eat noodles that rapidly. Carbs yeah. are difficult for old people to digest, man. Yeah. I see. Although I do love that episode, ah, uh, I can't remember which episode it is, but there's a bit where, what did I pack for my, myself for lunch? One pimento bean, one olive, one Philly cheese steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they end up at the bowling alley and... Um, yep, that's where he uh, pops the question. Yeah, it does it in that very cute way of like, you can find... Uh, You'll find that red ball more engaging. And I mean, mm-hmm. what woman doesn't love puns? Mm-hmm. I hope I get asked to be married via pun. <laughs> you would love that And you made a good observation Lucky she's left handed Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I observed That you know Being that Simpsons characters Have four fingers The yep. wedding ring goes on The middle finger <laughs> <laughs> Ah <sense>. yeah <laughs> And yeah Another great Burns bit He goes Kalu kale <laughs> <laughs> Getting yeah, married Which is uh, There's a I great be- little bit Of flouncy there I believe that's a Alice in Wonderland reference Oh, oh fran- really fra- Oh fran- fabulous day Kalu kale oh. Is from uh, the Jabberwocky poem so this is why I get you guys on. You don't, this you know things. Knowledge I'm of just Carol. I've spent all my time watching only Simpsons. I need you guys to tell me when they were referencing other things. <laughs> so then Homer and Burns make their way to the bathroom. Excuse me, we need to expel some urine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yes. What else would you call it? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then uh, Burns is like, "Oh, I'm getting married, and nothing can go wrong. That's right, nope. Nothing at all." <laughs> And then Snake comes along. Mm-hmm. That's sort of the part that you usually hate, the instant karma cut, mm-hmm. um, where they're like, nothing's ever going to totally blam. It's, is it foreshadowing? Is that Would you call that foreshadowing? Yeah. I don't think Very it happens instantly. It's not so much foreshadowing. They've done it a few times to good effect, like uh, when Homer refuses to give away Bobo, and he's like, yep, there's no way my life could get any worse. That's right. No mm. way it could get any worse. If this was a cartoon, the cliff would fall off now. Oh, yeah, Simpson right. reports much worse duties. So it's not exactly a bad I, I, uh, like framework for a joke. It's just, it felt a bit hackneyed in it this all, one. Yeah, it all comes to ex- uh, execution. And it's it didn't thing. have anything special for the cut, really. It was True. just cutting to the next scene. But at this point, you know something is going to happen. Otherwise, the episode just ends. <laughs> yeah, and there was no hint of it before. So it does feel a bit more forced. Yeah, if she had said something like, oh, the guys I've dated before have all been yeah. Yeah. like scumbags. Yeah, especially for a meter maid, it felt a little out of character. Mm. But, yeah, but I, I don't hate it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just okay. It is never mentioned again that she was a police officer. Sorry, not police lady from before. Police officer. Is she a police officer or is she a meter maid? maid? I thought meter maids were part of the police. Um, <laughs> There's no way they have that much of authority. But in Zootopia... Mm. <laughs> Being a police officer takes like a year of training. Being a meter maid takes like an afternoon in Cessnock. Where did you hear that? At police school? <laughs> this is Springfield. It takes more than that to be a police officer. We have to break you down, then build you up, then break you down again. <laughs> then lunch. lunch. Then at this time, build you up again. She was yeah. wearing a blue uniform, not like a maid uniform. It's it true. was different from the Springfield cop outfits, though. Yep. Yeah. yep, yep. It's a bit more meter maid Revenue generation officer. So yeah, um, Snake kidnaps Gloria and uh, Homer and then um, leaves Burns thinking that Gloria ran off with Homer. Yeah, which makes uh, sense because she uh, mm-hmm. dramatically throws her hand up which launches the ring and leaves it on the ground and Homer's yeah. gone and she's gone and yeah. the ring's there. That's fair enough. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that the that act ended with Burns in like the hero pose? He's on one knee with like the vengeful look. Homer! Oh, yeah. yes. Nice. Powerful. So and I- someone noted that he remembered his name for once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he has been hanging out with him all 
Week? Afternoon. How long is this <laughs> happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How Even long does a montage take? Timeline questionable. Mm. So yeah, Snake uh, got a gun pointed at Homer. I didn't really think much of the whole them driving off scene. I do like that they then uh, come to Camp Brockman. He's like, we're going into a story that a p- couple of Springfieldites have been missing for 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, and <laughs> I think Burns said, uh, oh my God, of course. And uh, they absconded with my Bugatti Sexarosa, <laughs> which is a way funnier version of the joke that came from the Italian yeah, Bob Lambergotti yeah. Fasterosa. Because they yeah. say Bugatti, why not? Speaking of which, check out my appearance on the Wii podcast where we discuss the Italian Bob. You need to explain what Wii sounds because otherwise it's either the Urination podcast or the Nintendo podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of which, catch my appearance on the Worst Episode Ever podcast where we cover the Italian Bob. And also check out the Simpsons Index episode where we cover the Italian Bob on episode 19. Anyway, enough plugs. Day uh, plus one. My <laughs> terrential. My sexy girlfriend, my sexually char- my sexually virile best friend, yeah. and my Bugatti Sexarosa. Oh, also, um, this is the first time I've ever seen Kent Brockman do a second camera angle. Do you, you notice they did the oh, yeah. and then they cut to a side shot of him? It was mm-hmm. actually really weird because it wasn't like on a, an extreme enough angle to look. It just looked like an animation floor. Never to me. seen it happen before. I feel like we've done multiple camera angles before. I, I'm sure there's been a moment where he's. Yeah, turned he's to turned camera. to camera too. I'm sure mm. they've done that. But like, I think uh, it was a bit di- um, weird. I mean, I haven't really seen 28th season. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, no, no, not even that. I'm but things like a kidney um, on this one. Not a single time ever. You know, Kent comes in on camera one and uh, talking about the killer bees will leave us alone if we leave them alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say, don't make that Batman because I, I can pretty sure I can think of two right now. Uh, one where he's like, we have our first caller, and I mean ever, because this is not a call-in show. I feel like that's a second camera cut. And I also feel like, and I for one welcome our ant overlords. May I be reminded that I can uh, use to round up others to share their underground sugar caves. I also feel like it might be a camera cut. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I've seen him do it before. Okay. Yeah. I think, the, oh, sorry, uh, the only camera cuts I can think of mm. are from our to cut to the guest, cut back to sh- reveal guest. I don't think that counts as a camera, separate camera angle on him. So there has um, definitely I'm, been camera cuts, I'm just man. saying, don't, <laughs> all right, all don't right. bet a kidney, I will take I've it. I've got two of them. Yeah, but you <laughs> What am I using them for? Dialysis. <laughs> well, yeah, f- they don't call it trialysis. So anyway... It's the- dialysis, <laughs> it's still two. They're at the cabin. It's not monalysis. <laughs> Snake has tied up Gloria and Homer, and she's Gloria's all like, oh, you're going to work him over with the brass knuckles? Again, unintended brass knuckles connection to the yeah, other episode. Yeah, I'm having fun here. Um, and um, anything anyone wants to say about the cabin? Um... The cabin itself? No. Yeah, I like I... the foot massage bit. Yeah, that was pretty funny. It's just constant. Oh, the pistol whip. How did we miss that? Uh, oh. He dreams about mm, eating pistol whip. Pistol whip. <laughs> cool. yeah, it's like cool whip, but pistol. <laughs> yeah, to be eaten off a pistol butt. There was a, there was a single frame w- of Homer with a gun in his mouth. Mm. Oh, there's a couple. That's because he's out eating the well, Yeah, gun first whip. in his mouth. There's... That's a, it, I, I, I feel that's a strange thing it's, to have. It's not Simpsons. a good thing to encourage. Yeah. But. I will say one thing about the cabin. I feel like I've seen it before, potentially in the episode where Bart runs away. Bart goes to juvie, escapes with that girl, and they have to mm. get their handcuffs chopped off by the blacksmith. I and don't know, it's a like line. cabin. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Could very well Stock be. Stock standard cabin. Yeah, well, uh, probably just a reused model. Snake said he killed, what, Gunther Gunderson to get it or something? That's right. Um, yep. Was did anyone catch the name? Because uh, that could have been a Simpsons character. Just, Another one killed just off. Just Gunderson, I think he said. Just I didn't... Gunderson, I think. That's Gil's yeah. last name. Hmm. Gil Gunderson. Oh. Yeah. Um. Gil Gun. I had to kill Gil Gunderson. Maybe. Maybe. Poor old Gil. Poor old Gil. Can't catch a break. This, because that's another death in in the last episode. Well, maybe, death in this episode. Maybe he thought he killed him. You know, it sounds like Gil to be shot, but not yeah, died. He's like the Hans yeah. Molman of the Simpsons. And then when he gets Pain. back, he'll be like, "But Gil, you missed four days of work. You're fired." <laughs> Hans uh-huh. Molman of the Simpsons, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the bit where Chief Wiggum gives away the uh the plan, and Eddie gets shot. <laughs> ow, 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 yeah. Ow, ow. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Cletus. Has like a, a a shitty snake tattoo on his arm. Yeah, maybe because like snake's been hanging around. And he's like, dang, snake looks so badass. I want to get a snake tattoo as well. I wanted to point it out, but you were talking out of a lot of dialogue when we were watching that. Like, but yeah. yeah, he's always had that cat- tattoo. That is so on model for Cletus. Okay, well, really? neither of us noticed. That. Yeah, but we'll trust you, Elliot J O'Neill of the Simpsons Index. I've seen them all because you look trustworthy. 
This is my trustworthy You can't place. tell on a podcast. <laughs> he does. So you trust him. Simpsons Index, the index you can trust, except when we make our corrections. <laughs> but we make No, you them. can trust the corrections, though. We make yep. them, though. We say, you know what? We did wrong. We're sorry, viewer. Yeah. Listener. Next week when Beej is like, you're right, there are no camera cuts on Ken Prockman's show. Have my kidney. <laughs> I have six. Time for my trialysis. <laughs> <laughs> so Homer um, goes up to the fire to, you know, um, burn, burn off his ropes. tires, and then he ends up setting the whole thing on fire. Naturally. Sets across a series of events where uh, he, is, he and Snake escape but Gloria's still trapped inside um burns runs in saves her but you don't, they do the whole misleading silhouette gag yep yep where you think burns is carrying her out but she's carrying him out i mean he still must have like untied her ropes and stuff yeah he still saved yeah. her effectively yeah he got he broke through the w- door and untied her things he did and then... 50% of the saving but that is not that. like hero enough for gloria no sir no, no she's mm. all throw her arms around him he saved me unlike that no good downright handsome as fuck snake Mm. Yeah, got a I'm thing for the bad boys. Bye bye, Burnsy. Bad boy for life. Also, bye bye, Snake. I'm pretty sure he's going straight back to the clink. Yeah. Yeah, but now he gets conjugal visits. Actually, I like his explanation of getting out. I told the guards I was going for a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> then I stabbed him. I could have left that at pack of cigarettes because mm. we know they have um, the the honor system prison. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Hey, you're ruining it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, then it pretty much ends with uh, Burns going, "I'm a bad boy. I'm downright evil." <laughs> and then they're talking about various facial hair he could grow, and it's a very odd week ending. But everything else, I think, was good enough that I didn't it's care. It's the walk too off much. into the sunset as the natter slowly yeah, fades. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think the the chatter is is, is secondary, In- inconsequential yeah. to the moment. Yeah, I'm on board with that. All right, well, it's time for the questionnaire. <laughs> so storyline-wise, it was an A throughout that just sort of had a non-secretor beginning, I'd say. Agree? It's a setup, and then, yeah, you hit A, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Absolutely. Yeah, it did. Yeah, no one was off point. Everyone, mm. it felt, yeah. It, I think the only thing that was a little bit weird was that sort of Smithers does disappear after the first act, and yes. like it's not mentioned. The you don't see main characters vanish in The Simpsons. Mm. Yeah, I feel like if they had more time, they might have had a thing where maybe Smithers wasn't quite a good wingman. But they yeah, obviously... I was yeah. thinking that too. Cause I, I reckon that would have been way like... better than the unrelated China Chinese stuff. Like, yeah, true. Yeah. Sorry, what were you gonna say? I just reckon Smithers would have been spending the whole time being jealous. I think we've seen him on dates with Burns before, and he's always mm. yeah. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. when he's dating. Uh, Angry. Marge's mom. Yeah, I'm pretty trying sure. to sabotage it. That's what he. No, be he's doing. not sabotaging, but he's grumbling about it. Yeah, he, yeah. Not Maybe if happy. in that car scene when Homer just was happening by, if Smithers was there and Mr. Burns was like, "Oh, you are an ineffectual wingman." Hey, you there, fat sir. Well, I think yeah. they explained why <laughs> Homer was good at it yeah. because he has that moment of explaining all the terrible things Monty's done that are yeah. super interesting to women. I'm sure, blotting Still, out the sun. How does that work? Don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> that was you. Hey, baby, I blotted out the sun once. Mm. Play Damn. count. How many times do you think you've seen it? I, I, I never have. But oh, I really? Loved it. I'm, 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 I'm ready to go back. I'm on Let's board. do it again. <laughs> I, uh, definitely at least once. I'm going to say twice just because of yeah. yeah, at least several, I'd say. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty it's... classic episode, even though it's not super, super old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had the old graphics for the intro. Mm-hmm. Made, made yeah, it feel yeah, yeah. retro, feel yeah. vintage. Mm. Yeah, particularly after the Gaga episode we just watched. Oh, yeah. It was like as soon as it looked a little bit fuzzier, I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the Simpsons we know and love. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I've seen it probably like 12, 13 times because like mm. while I was watching the 13th season on TV um, back in the day, I was, I'd was i miss the odd episode and I didn't get to tape all of them. This wasn't one that I taped, but one that I enjoyed many times on DVD repeats. For you, 12 or 13 is nothing. Yeah, I know. No. That's like having, that's the average person's version of never having seen it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the currency conversion of, yeah. <laughs> um, any memories of quotes and stuff that impacted your life? Anything you've used in day to day? Well, I'm out. Yeah. I don't think this one made enough of an impact. Although I've said Boulder Dash and Capital. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of burns against to take away. Plenty I want to start saying. Yeah, that's right. Now I will. (gasps) Kalu Kale! Oh, come, (laughs) Elliot and Danny. Let's go womanizing. (laughs) (laughs) Pilot my motor coach. (laughs) Um, Wackiness. Um, not huge. Uh, uh, I suppose the injection, maybe. Yeah, the injection. some of the montage stuff. The, yeah. yeah, the monta- all oh, uh, the the the, the start in the heart, the little weird pipe for the noodle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not like essential to the plot wackiness. That's just you know fringe wackiness. So. Mm. Yeah, definitely to the benefit of the oh, episode for though. sure. You get the jokes out of there. Heart. Mm. Um, 
it is a little uncharacteristic for Mr. Burns to be so into the idea of love for everything. He's he's fallen in love before and had some great moments where he's been like, ah, uh, what is it? Whoop de doo to the world. Whoop de doo, Mr. Flores. Whoop de doo, Mr. Flannery Man. Whoop de doo, <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> I feel like the heart question can always come down to whether at the very end there's a do 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 do. There wasn't here, so no, no heart. <laughs> no, I, and it was <laughs> like... only soul patch. It was just, re- <laughs> um, yeah, resetting back to zero. Burns is a love less billionaire again, and now he might grow a soul patch. <laughs> that would look great. Mm. Okay. Walks off hand in hand with the Simpsons. Won't remember their names by uh, tomorrow. He, he yeah. needs like the the pencil moustache, if anything. Yeah. Mm. Yes or no? Would you watch this episode again? Absolutely. Yep. Oh, yeah. Me too. All right. So let's put it in a playlist then. What's the theme? Burns in love. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think Burns that's episodes. Enough. Yeah. Mm. This and the uh, Mrs. Bouvier and Mrs. I'm sure we've had Bouvier. another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They would all, all pair nicely together. We could do wingman ones with like Homer and Flanders, yeah. Homer and mm? uh, Apu, Homer. Uh, one where yeah. he breaks up other people's relationships for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's rank this thing. Woo! Kick it off, Ashes. Ah, uh, oh, it's a very close between gold and cubic. Wow. But, wow, really? Mm, I'm going to go gold. All right. I feel like I've seen episodes of The Simpsons that are much better, but I did really enjoy this one. Sure thing. Uh, BT, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. I had fun. I'm not going to go that high. I'm at a silver. Mm. I've been, I was at a silver about halfway through and it continued throughout. Mm-hmm. It, there's, there's just better it's not to say anything's particularly bad here it's just there's better there yeah yep Chuck. danny uh, i'm gonna s- mm. do you want to come back to you no 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 i, I, I just gotta figure out how to say it um damn it i want to go gold because they went silver <laughs> um uh, you went gold as well didn't you mm-hmm. yeah no look but but i gotta say silver uh because it started the china stuff started off the first act didn't feel that amazing. It was just mm. like like wasting time because you had too much minutes. 20 minutes is too much to work with. True. You could have mm. just literally gone to Burns and Smithers eating Chinese food. Yeah. Um, but from from then on, I loved it. I would have given it, I bam, gold all the way. Mm. But but that's like only, what, 12 out of 30, 20 minutes or something. Mm. You know mm. what? I think if it wasn't for all the Burnsians yeah. in this episode, it would maybe even be a bronze for me. Mm. It was mm. just them that knocked it up. Yeah, yeah. Like, so look, many, one after the other, after the other. The Burns material was so strong in this episode, but yeah, I totally agree. The uh, China stuff like brought it on racist at times. So look, Bored. that's where it lost points for me. But ultimately, I had so much fun watching it. There were plenty of actual lol laughed out loud. Uh, Ruffle copter moments. Um, you guys Stop. had to pick me up off the floor and pause the episode at times. So yeah, I'm giving it a silver. Yeah, we yeah, did actually forget around. to mention in the Gaga one. You tried to smother yourself at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I've walked out of episodes before, but I've never tried to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that does it for A Hunger Hunker Burns in Not Love. And now we are going to season nine with Realty Bites. Is this the one where oh, Mars yes. becomes a real estate agent? Yes. Yep. And a yeah. uh, 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 bit Kwan. of a milestone episode because it's the first appearance of Gil. I've already used and the, the quote. L- and the last <laughs> appearance of Lionel Hutz. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, sad now. Yeah. Rest in peace, Phil Hartman. We missed you, buddy. We are back and we just watched season nine, episode nine, or in German, season no, no, um, <laughs> Realty Bites, uh, okay, this is the one where um, Marge takes up a career as part of the Red Blazer uh, real, real estate thing. agency, mm-hmm. and in the other story, uh, Homer buys a car from a police auction, which turns out to be Snake's car, and they have a wily Coyote oh, Roadrunner sort of style uh, uh, battle for the car. Mm-hmm. Guys, what'd you think? Smashing. Mm. Oh, jolly good, good time. Oh, 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 delightful. Oh, jolly good. Indeed. <laughs> 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 capital. <laughs> capital. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's racist. Uh, sorry. It's filled it's our racist. Emo- <laughs> 
<laughs> it raised us up one. from the d- uh, the dumps of the Lady Gaga episode. <laughs> yeah. It's much better going this way. You know, yeah, I feel much better. Worse. But yeah, an unintentional theme where yeah we reference the whole hey, um, hey you ruined it for the rest of us and here it was in this episode. Mm-hmm. I saw a sort of vaguely unintentional theme where someone sort of died in each episode. In the first one, sure. Mo gets hit by the the train. Yep. In the second one, Gil. Might be Gil Gunderson. I have to double check, but I think Gil Gunderson gets murdered by Snake. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the third one, uh, Jealous well, Jockey. Oh, Jealous Jockey. I was actually going to say Kirk gets his arm lopped off. That <laughs> seems... No, he's seen in the unemployment line later. He's fine. He's, he's, he's just bandaged. He's fine. Yeah. Okay. And now okay. he's probably claiming disability. Mm-hmm. Which, fair enough, you just had your arm lopped off by piano wire. Was oh, it the yeah. same arm that was horrifically broken in the in his youth as a as a lacrosse player ah oh, <laughs> probably well um, i mean it's just the van houten's luck isn't it i think that was his right and this is his left ow <laughs> slice damn it I'm gonna quickly say i do like we don't mention cal- couch gags often i'm gonna mention this one because it's spin art which is just so very 90s mm. it did feel like the 90s what year mm. was this episode do you know uh, 99. Fuck, i got to start writing the dates down because this does come up. Um, starts out with one of my favourite, favourite Homer jokes. Oh, I love these lazy Saturdays. It's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, work! <laughs> then, I love these lazy actual Saturdays. Not like yeah. that stupid fake Saturday that almost then got he, me fired. Then he he, he, he licks the, the popcorn, which I do all the time. Yes, me too. Chokes on it, gets another one, God. chokes on it. <laughs> oh gets my God, another. you guys balance the popcorn bowl on your stomach as well and reach out with your tongues and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's another way. <laughs> I mean, sure, you choke every uh, other kernel, but it's worth it. It's how I get the TV remote as well. Price of doing yeah. business. I mm. don't care what else happened in that first bit. Just the choking on popcorn constantly was enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, and even Marge worrying about it, wasted lives. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, she goes, life is short. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It's like, we need to make sure we're not wasting our time. Now that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I love... Um, um, we're, we're the, the Azalea Festival is on. Oh, I went yesterday. <laughs> Lenny really wanted to go. Yeah, and other than one line Lenny, this introduces me to another concept that um, uh, indirect Lenny jokes where Lenny's not there. They just mention him. Yeah, mm. but it's still one line. Mm. Those are always good. And um, it's jumping ahead, but yeah, another favourite, favourite Lenny gag. Of, oh, yeah. Um, the dilapidated house, the wall falling down. <laughs> Please don't tell people how I live. Spencer. Which almost seems like it should have been a mo joke. I think. Almost, but I think it just lands better because it's Lenny for some reason. Yeah, yeah. even the name Lenny just works better sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> but yeah, he's like uh, like that ill-defined character that can mm. have all these things applied to him. And yeah. in the one-line setting, it's totally funny. But yeah, it's when that they try to mine more material from Lenny that it yeah, always falls Yeah, and he can shorts. be completely different episode to episode. There's an episode where he lives in some brand spanking new apartment. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Next well. to a highlight court. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Homer d- uh, says, "Yeah, Marge, I'm taking you out." And they go to the police auction. <laughs> Get your best dress on. We're going out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very rare you see Marge wearing something different. Yeah. Yeah. I liked her little pink getup. Mm-hmm. And she was really disappointed with that. And Homer's like, "Oh, we can get you a drug boat or a drug dress or a I drug bag." I don't want a drug place. boat. <laughs> Um, very, very funny stuff. Um, and as you pointed out, yes, Little Bandit, Snake's car did not have the license plate of Xcon or for the phonetic al- alphabet, Eggplant, Xerxes, Crybaby, Overbite, Narwhal. <laughs> but to wow. be fair, that was way back season two. It makes sense he might have a new car by now. Yeah. What so, was it also, this he episode? wrecked that car. Great bait, was it? It was, um, yeah, I wrote down GRB68, might have been GR868. Uh, okay. I don't get it. I thought it was a reference to jailbait. I was about to say, no, it's close maybe. to being jailbait. Yeah. Great 6 8, great gate. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it's a reference to that gate that was sold at the police auction earlier. Mm. Well, I think you have to maybe say it like a Kiwi, like great sex 8. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I get it. Because <laughs> of Snake's long standing New Zealand uh, yeah. heritage. Yeah. Why else would they call him Snake? Ooh. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Snake sees little... It's what? Not, it's not meant to make sense. That's I know, I was trying one. to just pave over Move that. On, shut up. <laughs> so Johnny D's gate gets sold. Yeah. Um, he bought it from Johnny yeah. C. It was a present from Johnny C. It's bomb-proof, bullet-proof, and ram-proof. Well, what happened? He forgot to lock them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Snake gets all, oh, tough break, amigo. Oh, but looks then... like they're selling your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, yeah, Homer buys Little Bandit, and I I love him driving away in it and Marge being frightened. Yeah, and... she's like, you got to be careful. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful when you're doing a dr- trick like this. <laughs> Two wheels. I like that before he drives off, he's in there going... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he can do that cool. for real. Just turn it on, mate. Uh, the g- how much do the gates sell for? How much do the gates sells for a kilo? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one I kilo. forgot all about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Homer's reckless driving. He's having way too much fun to listen to Marge's nagging, just abandons her at the side of the road. <laughs> and Which is when she sees the realty sign and we see Lionel Hutz. <sighs> for the last sweet, time. Sweet, sweet Hutz. Yeah, that's I actually really noted sad. he was a bit more exposition-y in this episode than he was like his normal... He was very like like friendly and sweet in this episode as well. Mm. He didn't have that sort of reek of desperation that mm. he normally has. Yeah. He also knew who Marge was from the get-go, and usually when he's, you know, introduced in an episode, they have Hi, to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Lionel Hutt's attorney at law. Yeah. Hi, Lionel Hutt's babysitter. Mm. 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 I suppose at this point he's represented them a few times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. <laughs> and he, he, we should really stop hiring him. I think it <laughs> moves faster if um, they, he just knows. Yeah, yeah. true. Um, and I like that line, you know, if you bought this house, you'd be <laughs> at home by now. What was it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, be at home by now. Oh, that's the classic realty line, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it turns out he does that to supplement his lawyering career because... Because the law business is a little slow. <laughs> and all of his clients end up losing their house. That was a natural transition. <laughs> I do love that. Beautiful. Man, I love Phil Hartman's delivery. It just, it sucks. Uh, it sucks so much. <laughs> I know. Gone. Th- th- at least this was his last one, and it's a great one. Yeah. Uh, you do have a great Marge line of, oh, it must be rewarding finding people their homes. Yes, the money is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great line. Well, we I guess we then move to Marge studying for the realtor's license. Then we get the, you know, put it into a song, and they're singing the song, and just cuts to home up. You're all nuts. Yeah. Well, beforehand, <laughs> they get to live in the house before they sell it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and he has Come all on, those boys. Cards. Let's go for a swim. <laughs> And I love Homer's other line. You know, Marge is really considering this. She's reading up and he goes, oh, come on, Marge. Trying's the first step towards failure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He fails to cut his potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I love that line in the same way I love uh, Jake the dog's line in Adventure Time. You know, um, being bad at something is the first step to being kind of good at something. Yep. It's yep. like there's pessimism, but it's like a motivational line, but it, yeah. there is an inherent darkness to it. Mm-hmm. And there's also the Simpsons line where Bart's learning guitar was, I wasn't immediately great at it, so I gave up. And said, like, son, that's yeah, fine. Let's just go watch TV. What's on? Put that in the it closet doesn't. with your judo suit, your unicycle. And, <laughs> yeah, but I-, I love all the bits with Bart and Lisa helping Marge. It was very cute. Like, yeah. And even Bart sort of being a little bit of the anarchist as well and yeah. not helping the situation. Mr. And Mrs. Superman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh. mind my husband. He's just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. It's just classic lived- meaningless shenanigans from, the, from Bart. Yeah. Yeah. But within context of, you know, what's going on, it works. But yeah, Lisa gives uh, Marge the idea to do the um, Duda Duda song and mm-hmm. set her uh, real estate facts to that. And Camp Town Races. Yeah. Oh, is that hey. what it is? Mm-hmm. So Marge goes to take the test. Yep. Yep. Good uh, sign gag. Oh, great sign gag. <laughs> uh, what was what that? What was that? I missed it. Real estate test, $75 or best offer. <laughs> <laughs> I just love at the end of the test, we're like, and you may now under, you may now undermine each other's confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Yar, I nailed that question. On the houseboat. <laughs> <laughs> um, i got to say, I want to say it's the same character model as the Don- Sutherland character in the uh, episode, Lisa the Iconoclast. Whatever. Uh-huh. And I super like when she passes and goes, thanks, kid. And be, Why don't you thank me? You didn't do anything. I like being thanked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure I've used that myself. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, she turns up to Red Blazer and Lionel Hutz introduces, and I forgot this is the also the first appearance of not only Gil Gunderson, but, yeah, but of Cookie Kwan as well. Yeah. I love Who's, Cookie Kwan. Uh, she's, she's number great. one on the West Side. You stay away from the West Side. <laughs> Are you guys talking about the West Side? No, <laughs> no, Cookie, I'm afraid of you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, more so in this episode than any other one that comes from it, they like really put in a few more uh, like Gil Gunderson as Jack Lemmon's character in Glen Gary Gang Ross, right? Oh yeah, I haven't seen that episode it, so uh, movie, so I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay, but, but everyone knows the you know you know uh, always be closing. Oh yeah. yeah, the Baldwin bit, the Baldwin bit where he has one scene and got nominated for a supporting actor Oscar. It was mm. written as a space filler. 
Yeah, I know. And yeah, it wasn't in the original uh, theater play, play nope. and then got added in afterwards because Baldwin fucking nailed it. Yeah. I also like the Red Blazer Realty tagline, uh, the 6% commission people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually quite low from what I've It heard. really is. And we did some math. That we'll get there later, but um, that house is cheap. Yeah, damn uh, cheap. Uh, it was their deposit. That wasn't the... No, that no. wasn't the... Yeah, so you yeah, times yeah. that Still. by... Still. 10%... Okay, if it's a ten thousand dollar deposit at six percent, you then divide that by six times it by a hundred to get the full amount. That's only one hundred and sixty six thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, one hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars. That's assuming that the deposit they paid was just the commission. Wasn't that their deposit no, on the house? Six percent deposit. What you mean? I thought deposit's ten percent. Yeah, most houses is ten percent. Yeah. They're, they're Either way, 6%. it's under two hundred k. Well, they're six percent commission, so she makes six percent of the house. But um, even then, that's still whatever. It's still, still, still not still a million less bucks. Two hundred thousand dollars. No, but they said the re- price has been repeatedly slashed and slashed again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Murder we'll house. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say about the first act. Um, I, sorry, I will say uh, when she first puts on the blazer, she has that nice little twirl through the office and is looking at all the gleaming signs. <laughs> mm. and it's a very nice moment. Cookie you, Kwan's you... gleaming gold tooth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the gleaming Marge Simpson thing. Mm-hmm. I know that spin is a reference from something, and I can't yeah. pick it. I just can't pick I it. Either. I'm just taking it as like a general everything's great spin. Yeah. I mean, who um, hasn't done that? You know, had a good day. You just twirl. Yep. Majestically. Oh, man, I'm twirling right now. <laughs> Always <this> twirling. Was... <laughs> twirling. So, yeah, they come into Act 3 and Red Blazer Realty have used Marge in their advertising. Well, they really made your butt look big. Yeah. I feel like there have been butts in all three episodes we watched. Yep. So yeah, many butts. Um, well, it's like, well, it worked for the Lumber King. And it's just the Lumber King jiggling butt. Lumber. <laughs> we need lumber. <laughs> I love how all the moving signs in this show go... Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could remember the lines. I only wrote down one of them. There's Marge selling the house and going. This kitchen features something I can't remember. Uh, centralized foam, bo- underflooring foam underflooring for flooring. enhanced uh, standability. Enhanced standability <laughs> and central bottle opener. Yeah. <laughs> I want a central bottle opener. But would you buy a whole house for it? Maybe. I'll, I'll just get you a bottle opener. Oh, that's good too. I'll <laughs> put it centrally in your house. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, it's all this. Marge's sort of. Merry Christmas. You assume I have a house. <laughs> you, I Please also don't assume, tell people how I live. I also assume you have bottles. <laughs> um, <laughs> so all this is like just leading to Marge, you know, uh, sort of being a bit too honest for the real estate game, you know. Hmm. Oh, this kitchen is rather cramped. And you know what? Dr. Hibbert's like, you know what? Appreciate your honesty. You ever need some drugs? Hit me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Slight paraphrasing there. Uh, his if you ever need a prescription, no questions asked. And yeah. his wife doesn't bat an eyelash like this happens. Or get a line of the, the whole thing. She had no voice actor in this episode. Yeah. Well, the thing with Bernice is, like, she's a hardcore alcoholic. Like, She is? Yeah. I've never noticed. The, um... Oh, there's so many episodes. The Beer Baron one, she's one of the people that passes out when she finds out alcohol's illegal, and <laughs> it's hinted several <laughs> times that, yeah, she's the... Right. Um, but they've never had an episode about it? Just background? No, I feel that'd be drawing way too much attention to I it. I like it, though. They keep it in the background. Yeah, no, good. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. good. They haven't done it. It's like that time they had a Gil-focused episode, and it was one of the most horrid pieces of shit ever. Yeah. Yeah. Which one's that? Uh, Kill Gil volumes one and two. Is that the one where he moves into the house and... Yep. Stays way too long for a whole year. I know it's not good. I wouldn't say it's horrid. Oh, mm. it is a definite failure in my books. I've, I've not seen it for a very long time. Well, got to wait for our Christmas special. God which damn it. doesn't happen because I don't want to do themed holiday episodes. doesn't believe in Christmas. Mm. But I believe in Halloween, so stay tuned for that. Mm. Yay. Where were we? <laughs> uh, let's see. Enhanced standability. Oh, Mel, but- Mel goes to bowl the... Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, Mel's girlfriend doesn't have any lines either. Barbara. No. But weirdly <laughs> enough, she weirdly enough she has teal hair as well. Yes. Like, what's with Simpsons characters and like, mm, I'd marry you, but you need to have the same coloured hair as me. Yeah. Wiggum's wife, yep. Van Houten's. Van Houten's, yeah. Probably Marge and Homer are the one exception. We don't know. Homer's, the uh, have, this, have similar hair Back when Homer though. had hair, it was brown. We know that. Oh, yeah, good point. Come on, mm. man. You know that. It's more chestnut. So, yeah, Marge doesn't con- uh, convince Mel not to buy this house either. and um, We're just enchanted by that sign. Bless this mess. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so it cuts back to the other story with um, yes. uh, Homer 
um, challenging Seymour to a, a drag a, a race. Drag like, race. Skinny my boy. high school sweetheart was killed in a drag race. Come on, yeah. it'll be fun. <laughs> That's what Laurie said. <laughs> and yeah, Homer goes to rev the engine, but the car starts stalling and he starts grinding the gears, working oh. it. And happens to do this right next to the yeah. penitentiary. And classic, classic scene. Uh, yeah. Classic yeah. line. You want to take this one? Oh, no, I, w- I couldn't. All right. Well, it's yeah. It's got to be you, man. <laughs> Come on, you're up to it, Shaz. It's going to be us all together. Yeah. That sounds like regular. She needs premium, premium dude. dude. Premium dude. dude. Yes. Oh, um, that was so satisfying. Beautiful, guys. Although you did gloss over him walking out of the honor code system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really oh, up the rest of, of us. I can't believe, yeah, what a uh, coincidence. We referenced it earlier. Yeah, and I didn't, didn't even, even think about this was that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. It's a name I like that that kid, Kearney. The yeah. one that's in prison is all of a sudden of age that he's in the adult prison for once and not the <laughs> He was the old juvie. enough to have a ki- uh, kid he as well. He a kid, doesn't yeah. he? That's right. Those floats but really rif- lifted everybody's spirits, especially after Watergate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was old enough for the centennial. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, it cuts back to Marge and the real estate agent and Lionel Hutz yeah. is disappointed that she hasn't sold a house. And, and I love his entire Starts bit. teaching mm-hmm. her the difference between the truth Shaking. and... The, the truth. truth. Nodding. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice callback. Beach is the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> For our, um, wait, visually impaired right, listeners on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he was doing like the, the visual descriptive for blind people, but I forgot it's a podcast. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so and we're back. Flicking through the book, yep. you know, going. Yep. It's awfully small. I'd say it's awfully cozy. Dilapidated. <laughs> Rustic. That house is on fire. <laughs> Motivated seller. I love that. I love the suggestion that it's just constantly on fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so having dinner, this is a moment that actually caught us all off a bit. You know, what the fuck was Marge serving at dinner this night? Oh, man, it was clearly cheese-filled meatloaf. It looked but delicious. But she served it to Lisa, and then they said something about potatoes afterwards, so i got to assume it's stuffed potatoes. It also looks like there's a plate of donuts on the table. Yep. Or, yeah. Looked like a chicken Kiev to me. But she served it to Lisa. Is yeah. she already vegetarian by now? Yeah, yeah. That happened in season seven. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's tofu dressed up to look like meatloaf. Tofurky. That she's serving. Yeah, mm. tofurky. She's pulling a con on Homer then, because he oh. would not put up with that shit. No, just, no. just, just for Lisa's. So she gets uh, motivated, and Ned and Morta buying a house, which I found a little bit weird, but they handle that part of the story in a good way, I reckon. No, no, it's... I don't have a problem with it at all. I don't know what you're talking about. I would <laughs> want to move away from next door to Homer. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the, the Flanders are that sort of people that would find a place and never leave. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the only mm. thing that sort of was like a bit, huh? But all the material around, like, Flanders being so nice, he didn't want to have Marge come <laughs> yeah. out all this way I to not that. sell a house. Like, it's she fantastic. Goes, Wait, Nettie, the, the uh, home buying course we took said we should look inside first. <laughs> <laughs> like, they needed to, to, to go to night school to learn how to buy a house. Aww. And just one of the recommendations is make look sure you look inside. <laughs> And that's where we get the famous Lenny bit. Yeah. Actually, yeah. there was a good, I don't know if you call it a sign gag, but the uh, moving van, you break it van rental. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I missed that entirely. <laughs> yep. And I think I've seen that in another episode too. The you break it is, you know, usually there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's during you that we go, we go back to Homer, who's, sorry, we go back to Snake, who's doing the uh, great little. Um, Roadrunner Road scene. Roadrunner bit where he's p- putting the piano mm. wire between trees and footsteps. Yeah. Mm. It's, like, it's Acme brand piano wire as well. Yeah, mm. exactly. And you've got the great Homer line, man, the air feels good on my neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a gumball. Misses the wire yeah. by just that much. Kurt, I ordered my sandwich sliced, damn it. <laughs> sliced. Beach is holding his hand in the air, much Ow. like Kurt did. <laughs> yeah. <Ow. laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> just, um, so I was told um, that the reason he like pings the piano wire, like flicks it, mm-hmm. is so that um, when the person passes through, that it'll serrate as it goes. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Nah, man. Maybe. Nah, nah man. Nah. I thought it was just so it goes doing. <laughs> yeah, he's tuning it's it. It's a piano. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have it tuned to perfect uh, middle it? C for it to be an effective uh, um, decapitator. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Long five. <laughs> Whoever told you that vibration thing is super wrong. That's... It has to like Liar. vibrate on a very, Liar. very low level. I think whoever told you that is a serial killer. <laughs> and a bad one. Yeah. Get better friends. 
So Marge shows Ned and Maud the murder house and they get so excited and they make so many unintentional puns. Yeah, uh, yeah the price has been slashed. slashed oh, the kid is so big. The kids could scream bloody murder. Mm. Oh, well, you know, I'm just going to spill my guts. I love this place. <laughs> Purple dreams. Nice callback to Flanders dreams. screaming like a, yeah. y- a girl. <laughs> so at the top of Act Three, um, Lionel Hutch is congrat. Lionel Hutch. Hutch. Lionel Hutch is congratulating Marge on uh, on selling a house, and everyone in the real estate's like, oh, whatever. She sold the murder house. Ooh, wow! How did you no, do that's it? That's something. And Gil with the whole. Uh, was it the old Cincinnati scrimshaw? Was it the old? <laughs> you Great Gil material here, mm-hmm. and. Marge was just like, no, it was just salesmanship. Sure, sure. Marge. Sure. No, it was. It was salesmanship. Sure, sure it was. was. <laughs> <laughs> Takes Gil's wall, gives it to Marge. Gil's like, no, you're not going to take this wall. I brought this wall from home. <laughs> great, great, great stuff. It's Walls just, are for closers. Don't bring it down with you, Gil. You're hanging on by a thread. Yep. Yeah, so and this part, you've got a uh, snake once again. He just jumps off a bridge and lands, into a, in, lands in the car with Homer and starts fighting him. But before that... For some reason, Homer's singing Luca, which is really yes. weird reference. It's what a, is that? It's a My pop song by Suzanne Vega about like spousal abuse. Floor. It's super depressing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just actually, a, it's it is about spousal reference. abuse. I only found this out recently. It's, and then... well, it's one of those great songs where it's sounds all shiny and poppy, but it's actually super depressing. And the yeah. idea is the metaphor is that many people in abusive relationships put on a shiny face and yeah. pretend that everything's okay. That's what it is. I live on the second floor. I live upstairs from you. Yes, I and think then you've seen like... me before. And then it's like, viewers here, something late at night, some kind of trouble, some kind of fight. Yeah, that's Don't right. ask me what it Don't was. Don't ask me what it was. Yeah. Wow. And then it's like this really happy song. I like yes. the way he sings it, though, I have to say. Know, it's just, it's <laughs> My a, name is Luca. <laughs> it's just a very weird reference to drop in there. It's like, but yeah, it he is. was uh, <laughs> delivering it with the sunny disposition that you'd sing with, uh, her name is Rio, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. Oh, but, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Andy. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the whole snake and Homer fighting on oh, the yes. car yeah. thing. That is just brilliant. I, I love it. Like, Dude, this is so dangerous. I know. <laughs> I also really like the Simpsons act- action music. Yeah. Like dun, the cop dun, chase. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 70s cop chase music. Excellent. Oh, apparently, it's a um, that music it was featured in that season three episode that mm. we did. But, uh, 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 separate vocations. Thank you very much. Ah. And um, it's from Tales of San Francisco, a movie about uh, yeah, a you cop drama. Oh, yeah. You got San Francisco was all the hilly and the windy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's every, any yeah. cop show from the 70s yeah. where they Pretty all much. fly off those yeah. hills. But <laughs> yeah, I noticed that, that yeah, that music was the same one that they used and yeah, it is a musical homage to yeah. that movie. And I do super love that while they're fighting, Homer's shoe comes off, bounces off the seat and lands on the accelerator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. And even like before they crash into the house and they're on the bonnet and Homer's kneeing snake in the face. Oh, like... man. <laughs> oh man. And they, wake, uh, they drive past Police Chief Wiggum who's like... <laughs> I want to report a 318 at waking a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so Marge goes to confess to Flanders about the murder house. Mm-hmm. You know, conscience gets the better of her. And I love the turn here that the Flanders family were actually excited to live in this house. Yeah, because yeah. you think about it, anyone who's like not going to worry about vengeful spirits is going to be a highly Christian family. So. Mm. Yeah, they're yeah. not superstitious. They're not, you know, they're yeah. just Christian. But you get the uh, very quick shining reference. Red room over there. <laughs> so clever. Yeah, it's great. Um, I'm a torso. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a jealous jockey. Yeah, and yeah, they were just thrilled with it. And they're like, you know what? You keep that holding deposit commission check. And yep. then all of a sudden, the car comes crashing in. Which has always bothered my mum because that's not how deposit checks work. Really? <laughs> you don't, like, they have your deposit. That's fine. If the house gets wrecked... They don't give it back. That's not a thing that happens. They didn't wreck the house. Yeah. It's your house. What? Like, you, you gave us a deposit. Oh, well, sucks to be you. Well, it's Marge, though. No, she wouldn't Marge, let though. that I'm just, shit slide. No, no. In well, context of it being Marge. Lionel then fires her for giving back the check. Yeah, mm. which makes total sense because you would. You just gave away 10K for no reason. I love that. Out of all the shit that she'd done, like, he was most upset about that. And you t- gave them their t- holding deposit back. <laughs> well, yeah, money. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I love it how it's just, yeah, Snake and Homer crash into the house and then Chief Wiggum follows afterwards. 
house is destroyed, and then, oh, lucky we landed on this bell rope. <laughs> he quit hugging. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm really badly injured. He looked yeah, oh, really he badly was. injured. Oh, we forgot the part where Homer's outside the, fl- the oh, the old Flanders house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this gives me the creeps. And then, so Marge gets fired, and she gets given the fired blazer, mm-hmm. and um, Homer's like, it's okay, straight to unemployment office. You know what I really wanted to see there? Mm-hmm. Who's coming with me, man? Who's coming with me? Yeah. <laughs> was Jerry Maguire out by this point? Oh, uh, definitely. Let's say yes. 96, I think, was Maguire. Yeah, it was mm. early on. Um, and I like in the unemployment office, um, in the line was uh, Larry Burns, mm-hmm. Mr. Burns' son. There was a writer um, that was from the Itchy and Scratchy episode. Yep. He gets fired. Is that the hippie-looking dude? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So you also have Kirk Van Houten in the unemployment line. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, yep. Well, that, that's to be fair, you just got his arm sliced off. With a newly reattached arm. I also really like the line where Bart's like, yeah, mom, you did the right thing, eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that George H.W. Bush was collecting uh, <laughs> unemployment at this stage yeah, as well. Because the Simpsons year. hate him. Yeah. Fun fact, do you know why? Why? Uh, during his term in office, George Bush said... The American people need to be less like the Simpsons and more like the Waltons. Yep, that's right. Wow. Yeah. What year did, did he come out of office? Uh, 1886. <laughs> <laughs> he means to say 1992. I didn't realise it was that late on. I thought yeah. he was earlier than that. Well, yeah, because Clinton finished up in uh, just before 2000. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> or Kodos, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Time for the questionnaire. Um, so storyline wise, yeah, it was an A and B. It was another one of those confusing things where like the Homer car story was technically the A because it started first, but Marge's story took up more of the thing. So mm. well, much no, the muchness. I super like that they start at the same point, point, split and then come back together. Yep. Always good when they can it's do like that. like a rondo. Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it did. Well, yeah, you can't disagree now. I, well... It was premium, dude. (laughs) Premium. Premium. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you guys are hilarious. Can we skip to that question about any lines that were memorable from this episode? (laughs) We're just doing it the whole time. You just got to do it via the way of play count. I've seen this episode 40 million times. Oh, yeah. I've seen it 40 million and one times. Damn you. Always have to show me up. Uh, 40 million and two. Oh, shoot. Mm, No, I'm guessing... 16. All right, Sheridan, you are the closest without going over. You win. <laughs> yes. What do I win? Another beer. <laughs> Different series. Oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Memories of how this episode influenced your life. <laughs> Premium. Dude. Yeah, I just say fact- it all the time. Premium. Dude. Dude. <laughs> well, the fact that we can all get the timing of that right without, yeah. like, exactly on board without any kind of rehearsal, I think that speaks yeah. volumes. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Harmonized pretty well on that. And also probably the, uh, you know, the Flanders scream has more or less impacted yeah. me as well. Mm. With I've the always arms going back and forth. used, like, the truth yeah. shaking and the truth. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Quoting mm. McQuotus an episode. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Ask for the sandwich to be sliced. Um, <laughs> it's one of the ones where you can just sort of quote scenes with your friends, like, while, rather than sort of stick out moments. But yeah, then there's like, you're all nuts. And yep. I mm. like being thanked. And yeah, I'm just great in this episode, too. Mm. I like being thanked. I've used yeah. that so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this feels like an essential one for the post apocalypse where we all speak in Simpsons quotes. Mm. If you can't say things like, hey, you're ruining it for the rest of us, then you're not going to be able to buy water in certain parts of yeah. the world. <laughs> mm. And yeah, uh, referring to Wednesdays as uh, lazy Saturdays and <laughs> <laughs> these lazy actual Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that bit. It's so funny. Um,. Any jokes that might have flown over your head in the day? Not really, probably. There was a time and place that I wouldn't have noticed the lyrics to Luca. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I don't actually know that song. So there we go. I'm learning. It's the oh. first time I um, noticed the You Break It fan. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Other than that. Such a funny mm. joke. Yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 the gaping board for a kilo, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One kilo. <laughs> um, wackiness. I, there were plenty of uh, with the, hmm. the Ac- Acme piano wire. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Shaking the sandwich in the air. Yep. Um, I'd say having an honor system prison is pretty wacky. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the fight on top of the car with the 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 very oh, light shoe God. still holding down the accelerator. Yeah. But it's great wackiness. Like and uh, like we've said before, you know, you build up to these moments and you earn it. Yeah, absolutely. Because then it's just fun and funny. And you don't care if it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's mm. in the heat of the moment. Mm. Like most things. Hot. 
did anyone feel hot? Not a hot episode, no. It's, it's a Hartman episode. You got a, l- mm-hmm. you got a little bit with uh, Marge wanting to be something other than a wife and mother. Yeah, Marge's integrity. I, not I the think. driving force behind it. I, I I thought the part where she couldn't she couldn't bring herself to lie to all her customers and yeah. she's like, yeah. I'm sorry guys, don't buy the house. Maybe you should stay with your house. It's nice. Yeah. Really true to her character. Yeah. yeah, Marge is very moral. She came back to that. She's a sweetie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and in the face of all... Um, of Lionel Hutt saying what you need to do. She just couldn't compromise her morals. So that's where you get the heart. Well, she could mm. temporarily. The kids wanting to help her study. That was nice. That was very, very cute. Mm. Oh. We'll have to sacrifice our own studies for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no, want to watch this episode again? Yeah, definitely. Yep. You know it. Mm-hmm. And what's the playlist? What's this one going into? Marge Jobs? Yeah, yep. yeah Marge yep. Jobs. Yep. Definitely. Um, Lionel Hutt's. Yep. Good snake episodes as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Gil one, appearances. Yeah, Gil, Lionel Hearts. We've had a lot of snake today. We've had yeah. a lot of snake today. Um, uh-huh. I used mm. to get this one in my head mixed up with the hairpiece one. The two, uh, <laughs> uh, Hell to yeah. pay. Hell to pay. All right. <laughs> Hell to pay. Great pun name. Mm. Very funny. Let's rank this thing. <laughs> Kick it off, Danny. This one is h- tough. I'm actually... Yeah. This one's tough. I don't know whether to say gold or cubic, mm. and I feel like probably people are on the same boat here. Um, but don't answer that because it's supposed to be your own Again, opinion. Again, don't tell me how to feel. <laughs> <laughs> I've already made up my mind. Um, I, I, I think I want to say cubic zirconia. Like, okay. this one, it when I think of The Simpsons, I think of this episode, you know? Mm. Mm. True. If you're going to tell someone, hey, watch The Simpsons, this is one of the episodes I would put on, like, first, first off. Mm. Cool, cool. All right, how about you, Shez? This episode was premium. <laughs> Dude! Dude. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I'm really tossing up between gold and cubic as well. I'm leaning more towards gold, and I couldn't tell you why. There's just mm, episodes no. I like more. You're allowed to say reasons? Mm. Reasons? Mm. Yeah, exactly. No, nah, look, I think it's they're all very true to character. There's some really quotable lines, but it wasn't, you know... I wasn't rolling on the floor. You weren't ruffle coptering? No. And also the Flanders is, is really annoy me, so <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's probably why. Where are you learning, Beach? Uh, I am pinpoint fence here. It's exactly between the two. Um, the Flanders were amazing in this one. They I had know. so many like dying puns <laughs> the, and yeah, he screamed at the drapes. That's the thing. They helped the episode, but that's you know, that's all they do for me. And, you know, when the Flander is 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 a really true to character they annoy me even more. So it's like, yeah. you, you know, poor writers here can't win with me. <laughs> wow. Rough. What are you saying, Beige? <sighs> I can't gold zirconia. Do you want me to do it? Because I, I know where I'm going. So. I already know where you're going. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Fail you. So I'm, uh, again, I'm going to gold and I don't know why it is just like a, a hair short of that and that's what hurts because it's so so close i don't know why yeah but it's just not quite there which hurts really to be perfectly honest but we'll figure out why be... as soon as the podcast turns off yeah because yeah. yeah. oh, i just thought of the perfect yes. thing to say <laughs> uh well yeah for me this is a cubic zirconia oh. you guys saw it coming nice judge o'neill over here but um yeah, when we're talking essential episodes, that's what the cubic zirconia is to me. Um, the, this is one of the essential ones. It's um, a great moment of Marge pursuing a career outside of being a homemaker, mm-hmm. and um, it pays off. Everyone's true to character. Look, the well, the weakness in it is the the story itself, because especially Homer's line, it's just so super Looney Tunes and stuff. But it, it's fun. It's the bit of levity that the other story uh, needed to counterbalance uh, it. So yep. mm. um, so many full of quotable uh, fun moments. And um, yeah, I, I get the whole sitting on the gold fence for this one. It's yeah. very and tough. Which um, I guess was uh, incidentally reflected in the rankings where we got to. I think to. it's just because Marge is the main character and she's just not as fun as yeah. a character. But I mean, I've, I've yeah. cubic ones before that aren't necessarily fun, but are great in like their what? own rights. Well, most recently we did Bart the Murderer, where Bart works for um, Fat Tony. Mixing drinks? Yeah, and it's not a hugely joke-heavy episode, but there's something very much about that story-wise that carries through. Yeah, mm. excellent writing can get it there, I think. And it's, again, it doesn't it's one... necessarily have to be laugh out loud, as you said. Yeah, exactly. It's just one that... 
I don't know why it's short. It just it isn't my heart isn't quite saying cubic. And I follow my intestine guts. <laughs> Not the heart. I'm just going to spill my guts. My CPU. <laughs> I was just going to say, the one human part that you've got in your circuitries. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's someone else's, but they're still guts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that has been episode uh, 32 of The Simpsons Index. Um, Guys, thank you for joining me in the dank this week. Uh, Do your sign-offs. Do you want to say something? I was just going to ask if we got two golds and two cubics. What's what? What, what, what are you going to call it? Uh, whenever it's a split decision, uh, it defaults to the higher ranking, but dull. So this will be a dull cubic zirconia because my theory is um, be, be charitable, be generous, be charitable. On a good day, you, you know, on a sh- on a sunny day, the episode will shine brighter, and that's sort of the theory. Yeah. With- <laughs> how's the that, heart in that? Wasn't that's that beautiful? That man. was lovely. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so deep. Mm. You know, you're a cubic zirconia. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> Alright everybody, say your goodbyes. Goodbye. I've been Danny Rosewell. My name is Luca. <laughs> I live on the second, second floor. floor. <laughs> all I right. live upstairs Stairs from, from you. you. That's all I know. Yes, I know you've seen me before. Alright, that's been Danny BT and Sheridan, and I'm Elliot J. O'Neill, and I'm telling you that I'm not tapping out. I mean, you're saying that, but are you doing it? He's tapping in, he's tapping off, he's tapping space. Thank you for checking out the Simpsons Index podcast. Don't forget to go to www.thesimpsonsindex.com for the spreadsheet and information about upcoming episodes. And for today's extra content... (laughs) Hold it, hold it. Perfect. Got that photo. (laughs) Anyway, again, another joke that didn't work because I was doing visuals. (laughs) Everyone, Elliot Journey was taking photographs with his fingers. Apparently that's not enough. Maybe you need to start YouTube filming this... uh this podcast no. except no one we'll in this room wearing is pants. wearing pants damn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow well done guys I feel like that will punch us up to the stratosphere and ratings oh it's true well maybe it's Tofo dressed up to Tofo but mm. she is want to stuff a, a bit of pork in her meals anyway. what are you about to say <laughs> who knows she loves to stuff a anyway. bit of pork in her meals and we're back yeah me yeah why am I holding this poo pillow? <laughs> That's Patrick Stewart. Look at it. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. And I'm back. No, because Patrick Stewart's going to be the poo emoji in the emoji movie. Oh, oh. oh there's a fucking I heard emoji it got movie. Can. No, it, you said that, and then I looked it up, and it's just getting more and more promoted damn now. It. And now so that Patrick so Stewart's on board with TJ Miller. Damn it again. Maybe it'll be like the Lego movie, man. No. I didn't have high hopes for that, and that was excellent. Mm. Or it could be like friggin' Angry Birds. I never saw like that. Pixels. Shockingly bad. Look, anything with Adam Sandler, like, at this point, if you go and watch an Adam Sandler movie, I mean, seriously, fuck you. You should have known by now. <laughs> yeah. It's not even his fault anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> Just stop that's, encouraging that's him. That's very true. It's like once bitten, twice cautious. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is uh, 14 times bitten. You know, you, you did this to yourself. Mm. And then when he goes to redeem himself with funny people and then you think, oh, maybe this is a turning point in his career. Maybe he's going to get self-deprecating. <laughs> nope, next movie, fucking Jack and Jill. Yeah, mm. I think the only time he's been good in the last 10 years is when Drew Barrymore's a part of it. Yeah, there's... but even then, Blended was such a... I didn't watch it. I know. I, I liked it. Blended. Um, really? There's, mm. There was a really interesting cracked post where they're like... It was, the article was something like five actors who are only good doing one role and one of them was Adam Sandler when he's playing a grown-up with actual problems. It's like... <laughs> Holy shit, that works. Mm. Every time he's playing a man child, fucking annoying as shit. But every time he's playing a adult with an actual adult problem, i.e. funny people, i.e. Um, punch drunk love, punch sort drunk of. love. Um, click. Click. He's got this, that gets weirdly deep. Like I feel it's not balanced in terms of comedy versus yeah. its surprisingly deep metaphor, but it's a high participant for me. Yeah. It's not a great movie, but but it's not yeah, it's, it's, it's not a disaster.